this works. Right, so normally this should be recording now. Okay then, so let's start. I mean, obviously there's a very first thing I've got to do. I mean, we, we're not making money here. I'm not, uh, you know, uh, giving you uh, some kind of service that you've got to pay for. But there's always a uh, government required disclaimer. I mean, I'm not in the US. I wouldn't be in the US even if I had a choice. Uh, but uh, should someone here be in there, as I know that they like uh, messing about with lawyers, well, here's a little disclaimer for you to read. Uh, basically, it tells you that what I give you uh, is information, educational purpose um, information, and as such, I cannot promise you that tomorrow you'll be millionaires, and that please do not contact your lawyers to uh, basically put a lawsuit on my shoulders <laughs> to say that, well, David, a DH trader told me that, I would be a millionaire in 24 hours. Well, that won't work. Okay, well, that's basically the disclaimer you can see on your screens now. That out of the way, well, that's what we were talking about earlier on. Why are we doing this webinar? So basically, the very first uh, reason why I'm doing the webinar tonight is for all the followers that we've got on eToro, growing by the day, I thank you all for this. Well, for you to understand our strategy. I mean, it's quite, quite often, I mean, a lot of people, uh, a lot of you do copy other uh, people on uh, on eToro and what you see is they take a position they don't say why they just maybe they don't even know why sometimes <laughs> yes exactly and uh, as such uh, well um, you don't understand what they're doing either and this is the kind of the most stressful bit of a copy I do believe because I mean obviously you see someone buy euro US dollar and then all of a sudden, the following day, he's got two or three positions of Euro US dollar, and you see he's selling Euro US dollar. So he's uh, going a bit both ways, creating a bit of a loss. You don't understand what he's doing. You don't know if he knows what he's doing. Uh, and as such, uh, well, you get a bit nervous. And what you do, you want to cut your losses uh, short. And, uh, well, oops, I'll just take that. Cut your losses short. And, uh, well, basically what you do is, um, uh, well, stop copying him. You obviously lose money as some trades most of the trades would have been in the red uh, and uh, that's not the way to go so I mean I will be explaining what we do why we take a position in what direction we take it uh, and uh, what enables us to take this position and eventually what I'll be doing too after a few webinars is showing you how you can do it which is basically what you're coming here for tonight I mean you just don't you don't just want to understand it you want to be able to do it by yourself and the only thing that I expect from you is that when you do do it by yourself don't leave eToro to one side and please share with us uh, the positions that you'll be taking uh, and that way I mean it's always good to have a second opinion two heads think better than one uh, and you'll be able to see if uh, quite a few people quite a few of you concur and uh, share the profits the um, other reason well that's what I was saying pass on the knowledge to enable you to trade by yourself what I've just said and we create a community where you will always be able to refer to uh, and pass on the trades that you do now the very very first thing that we're going to go through I mean quite a, when I asked you you know what experience you had in trading how long you've been trading for I saw a few uh, answers like one month, two months, three months. Uh, someone actually put one year. Uh, so, I mean, with these uh, answers, uh, what you would have done now is get into bad habits. I mean, it's a bit like when you go and drive, you pass a driving test. Well, if you knew how to drive before you went for your driving test, then I can guarantee that you're full of bad habits and you're doing things that you shouldn't do and that will make you not have your driving lesson uh, or test shall we say on the day so I mean there are a lot of bad habits bad habits that it's very surprising to see a lot of uh, traders on eToro do and we're going to go through a few not all of them because they're too too many but uh, the main ones uh, in order for you to know that these are to be avoided now the very very first one over leveraging I mean this is a very important one too uh, over leveraging I mean it's simple I mean over leveraging isn't a bad thing as long as it's used properly I mean to leverage is something that is very important to do because uh, it will enable you to increase your profits but obviously if it goes the other way your loss will be greater so I mean um, it is good uh, we will be leveraging over leveraging maybe not you've got to be very careful when leveraging because I mean we are in volatile markets uh, and quite a few, quite a few of you will have noticed that sometimes uh, you take a position. You we're on, let's say, the DAX at times 100. So DAX time 100, you've only got uh, about 90 points leeway to uh, 
uh, to breathe, shall we say, and with these volatile conditions, well, all of a sudden, bang, your stop loss is hit. You've just lost, if it's just one unit, say $90, uh, and that after that, the market went your way, and you would have made a lot more. So, I mean, that's when over-leveraging is, is bad, not to do it then. Uh, when it's good, well, that's basically when you're taking a position with a very, very tight stop loss. I mean, stop loss is something we're going to use, not necessarily in the sense of a stop loss, but a stop alert. I will inform, well, I'll basically go into what stop alert is uh, afterwards, uh, but uh, we will be using stop losses and we will be placing them at strategic points, which mean that should it be hit, then we will be going into a different kind of trend and as such, uh, a different trend means that uh, your trade was not good. And if the trade isn't good, we do not we do not keep it I mean keeping bad trades in our portfolio is something uh, deadly it can cost a lot of money to you to all the people that are copying you uh, and uh, all you do is hope for the best I mean you you start being a trader and you become a hoper you hope that the market will go your way but you've got nothing substantial uh, to prove that the market will actually do what you want it to do okay so Mm, never over leverage in a volatile market, which is what we said, especially before stats or announcements. So if we go, for example, with a euro US dollar, I mean euro US dollar, uh, especially NFPs, etc. If you over leverage, um, well, you'll notice that unfortunately, uh, well, your stop loss will be hit and you will lose out. I mean, uh, I don't know if most of you have noticed that when you have got an announcement, all of a sudden the market jumps the opposite way. Uh, that it's supposed to go, and then it goes down. I mean, have, have a few of you seen this, for example? Let's say that, um, I'll just take my pen. Let's say that the uh, euro, uh, US dollar is coming like this. We're waiting for the NFPs. All of a sudden, uh, well, the uh, information is negative, so we expect uh, an increase. But what happens? It drops quite a bit first, and then it goes the other way. I mean, uh, this happens all the time. And what happens here is that, uh, well, people are cheating. I mean, institutions are cheating. What they do is they create a false sense because a lot of uh, traders got ready, said, well, I'm expecting this to go up. So they place their stop loss at strategic points here and then expect it to go up. The big institutions cheat. They say, well, let's hit these stop losses, take the money from you, and then eventually close our short positions and go the way it should go exactly shaking the tree that's exactly what happens and there's something that is always done and over leveraging is uh, fatal lethal uh, when uh, this happens which is why I always say do never 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 over leverage especially uh, before stats or announcements I mean we've got a special way of trading announcements we never get in before because of this we'd never know uh, how uh, important the drop will be before so uh, we've uh, basically got quite a few you know, I'll say strategies or techniques uh, that we use in order to trade a stat uh, how do we trade a stat I mean I'll, I won't go tonight into detail there I'll just give you a brief uh, picture what we do is we wait for the stat to go up 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 uh, it usually goes quite up in a straight line uh, for those of you who've got a bit of information or a bit of knowledge on this, we draw a Fibonacci retracement and we've got an indicator, which is a sigma indicator, indicating when a market is clearly overvalued or undervalued. When we reach this sigma zone on our charts, this is when we determine, right, well, it's due for an immediate correction, and we focus on roughly about 10 to 15 pips retracement, thanks to the Fibonacci retracement, and this is where we short it. This is how we trade a stat. We're never too greedy with the... Uh, the pips for a stat, I mean, it's uh, obvious that sometimes it can go the other way. And, uh, well, I mean, if you are greedy and you try and get more and more, that's usually when you're caught out and you're stuck in the middle. Okay, then. Right, knowing how to enter a trade. This is uh, very important to you. I mean, a lot of traders uh, enter a trade and see that the market is going up or down rapidly. Uh, they don't know how far down it will go. They don't know how far up it will go. And what they're doing is they are chasing the market. I mean, I'm sure what quite a few of you have done this. Uh, I know this because uh, uh, I've done it too when I first started. I mean, I didn't have any education. Uh, I didn't study. I didn't go to a trading school, which I did. I went for two years to a trading school. Uh, and, uh, well, I learned to uh, uh, take a position. Now, I mean, chasing the market is something you must never do. I mean, I'm quite sure that uh, quite a few of you would have noticed that uh, 
uh, when you do enter a position, I mean, all of a sudden the market goes the other way. Let's say that we're looking at the DAX. The DAX is going down nicely. And all of a sudden I say, well, let's, let's sell. I mean, everyone's selling. It's going down pretty quick. And as soon as you enter, you press your, you click your, your sell button, what happens? It goes the other way. I mean, it makes you so angry that you actually feel, and you've got this, this immense feeling that the market was just waiting for you to press this sell button in order for it to go the other way. So, I mean, obviously, that's something that uh, uh, does happen. Uh, it's called chasing the market. Fortunately, you entered at the wrong point. But what you did is when you entered, uh, you got your position in green and in, prop in profit for a little while. And what happened? Well, I mean, you wanted it to go a bit further, but you didn't know how far you wanted it to go. And as such, eventually, it went the other way, took all the profit away from you and left you with a position in negative. So, I mean, when you enter a trade, you must know uh, three important things. You must know when to enter, which is at what point do you click this sell or buy button, when to exit, exactly where are we going to exit, at which level, why this level, all this is calculated, all this is a strategy. You can't just say I'm going to buy or I'm going to sell and then I'm going to keep it and see how it happens. I mean, you'll, you might have realized that quite a few of the um, older generations uh, would have uh, invested in that way. I mean, I remember, for example, my grandparents, even my parents, uh, when they used to buy shares, I mean, they didn't do it on a trading basis. They, at the time, they used to go to the bank, uh, tell their manager, well, okay, what are you buying today? Right, I want to buy, uh, I don't know, Société Générale in France or El Liquide. Uh, and uh, what they'd do is they'd buy the shares. Obviously, you couldn't uh, uh, short sell at that time. You could only buy. And then they'd keep it for two, three, four, five, even six or seven years. And then uh, go back to it. Let's see how it's doing. And then sometimes, right, it's, you know, I'm losing a bit of money, but as long as I don't sell them, I mean, the loss isn't materialized, so I'll hang on to it. And then that was the way you used to do it. I mean, I don't know if some of you still do it this way. I mean, buying like that is something that was done. Unfortunately, it doesn't take you anywhere, really. And what we are after is a full-time job in employment in trading. And as such, we want uh, daily results, if not uh, weekly results. So, I mean, what we want to do is we want to know when when to enter, where to exit, and always have a plan B if the trade doesn't work out. Now, plan B is usually your stop loss. So, I mean, if uh, the trade doesn't go the way I go and goes the other way, uh, would we be leaving the trend, i.e., if we're going, if we're in downwards trend, and uh, I expect an entry at a certain level, should the uh, well, let's talk about the DAX for example, should it go the other way? At what point would we exit this downwards trend and possibly enter either a uh, sideways movement or a downwards uh, sorry an upwards trend so I mean at that point if we do that you don't want to hang on to a short position so you either close it if you believe that uh, the movement will be up for a long period of time or if you think we're just breathing ie the main weekly charts or daily charts is still a downwards trend and we're just in the hourly chart which is going up then what we can do is hedge so what we would do is we would open the long position there. So we'd keep our short position, open the long position uh, to hedge this. And then when we reach uh, the point of a trend line of a higher time frame chart, i.e. daily or weekly, then at this level it would see if we bounce back down and head back. If we do, then that's when we close our buy hedge. Uh, obviously, very important to do that because, I mean, we've got a nice little profit on that one. Uh, we don't want the market to take it away from us. So we close this and we go back down and wait to be back in green for this one and continue our way down. If we break the higher time frame, then at that point, we've got to materialize the loss on the sale, which uh, was kind of paused and frozen out with a hedge. So at that point, we would close the uh, uh, negative position and keep the uh, buy position because if we break a trend line, then we usually have a quite a violent and strong movement to the upside. So that's very important too. So always have a plan B. So chasing the market, that's what we're talking about. I mean, how many times have you sold short a product just to see the price immediately go up? All the time, we always do that. How many times have you thought, you know, the market was just waiting for me to buy in order to go the other way, was waiting for me to sell in order to go the other way? I mean, this is always the frustrating aspect of it, especially as we were talking also about volatile markets. Uh, sometimes, I mean, we see well, quite all the time, I'd say about 90% of our trades uh, will actually go red for quite some time, a few minutes, maybe a few hours, a few days. It depends what kind of trading you do. And uh, eventually, go your way should your um, 
uh, you know, your strategy be uh, correct and you believe in what you do. This is where the psychological aspects are very important because obviously if you've got a strategy, you know why you've entered a trade, you've got a study and you're monitoring your, your trade, making sure that you're still in, in the trend that you, you know, you're trading in, then you cannot let your psychology or so I say emotions uh, come in the way. Obviously, you've set a stop loss level. This stop loss level shouldn't, uh, you know, be a, a too big a risk with, you know, regards to your equity. And as such, will uh, you shouldn't be nervous. I mean, trading isn't isn't about being nervous. A lot of people are are biting off their nails and they're extremely nervous in front of their computers, and then they can see, oh my God, my position is going minus ten, minus twenty, minus thirty percent, minus fifty percent. Oh no, I can't let this, and then they close. I mean, this is something that obviously will ruin your account sooner or later. Uh, this usually happens when you either overtrade, uh, which is opening positions that are way too big. That happens, unfortunately, because uh, as such, a lot of traders initially are greedy. And greed is something that you cannot be when trading. I mean, this is something simple. I mean, I might sound a bit patronizing. I don't, I don't intend to be. Uh, but it is something that you've got to bear in mind as uh, greed will make you... Uh, take decisions that uh, are not adequate when trading. So, I mean, do not chase the market. Never, never chase the market. If you're going to take a position, either buy, sell, if you're going to press this buy button or sell button on eToro, don't do it because the market is dropping quickly. Don't do it because it's going up. Do not chase the market because you'll get burnt. Uh, always do it because you've studied, you've got a strategy, you know why you're doing it, and you know what to do if it goes the other way, and you know when to close your position too. That's something that, as I said, I'm sure most of you out there do not do. They just see a position that's open, and when they reckon, well, I've got a bit of profit here, uh, might as well take it, and you either lose quite a bit of uh, money because you could have made more, or you let it go, go, go until the market takes it back from you, and you're lumbered with a negative position. Right, now then, this is the worst thing that we can do, extending your stops. I mean, I uh, I really like uh, eToro Social uh, Network. I mean, this is a platform that I, I really like. I tend to have a chat with most of other uh, uh, popular investors on there. I mean, uh, I never try to uh, offend them because, I mean, there are, I must say, easily offended, uh, unfortunately, for some of them. Uh, but I try to ask them a few questions with regards to their strategy. Why? Well, because I have got an account, uh, well, a separate account, not the one that uh, you you know you've been copying me from or following me on. Uh, and I do a bit of copying too. I mean, as I said to you, it's a bit like putting a bit of money in the bank and getting a bit of interest on it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But the other day I was talking to uh, a popular investor, as I said, I won't give names, and uh, I said to this person uh, on the chat system, uh, what is your strategy as such, and what do you think would happen with a specific position? This person had a Euro-Swiss franc uh, position, uh, I believe it was, uh, yeah, it was a buy Euro Swiss franc. So they were betting the Euro to go up against the Swiss franc. Uh, this position was in quite a negative uh, number. And uh, the answer was, well, I'm just going to ride the wave because I never close a position in the red. Now that raised loads of alarm bells as far as I was concerned because I said, well, are you telling me that you win all your trades? And the answer was, yes, I do. What I do basically is I open it and then I just wait and wait, and wait, and wait, and eventually, so far, the market has always gone my way, and uh, I was able to close in the red, uh, uh, sorry, with a profit. So, that for me is something that can't work. I'll show you a few examples on actual charts later. Uh, and the, with the case of the Euro Swiss franc, I mean, I don't know if some of you are aware, if you are trading Euro Swiss franc, be careful. On the 30th of this month, November, there is a referendum on whether or not the Swiss will be backing their currency and their assets with gold, at least 20% of it must be backed with gold. If they vote yes to this, then you can guarantee that your bottom dollar that the Swiss franc will skyrocket. If that's the case, well, unfortunately for this uh, popular investor, uh, well, uh, they will uh, have a position with maybe minus 2,000, minus 3,000%, if not more. Uh, the other thing is gold. Gold should go up. The price of gold should go really high up uh, with, ref with regards to this referendum. So as such, uh, you can watch this on the 30th of November. So never be tempted to, uh, you know, extend your stop loss. If you have a plan B, which is hedge, uh, do that. But hedging is very difficult. It's uh, a tactic that you've got to do properly. 
uh, you've got to realize what you're doing and why you're doing it. So, I mean, with hedging, I'm just going to do your little illustration. Let's imagine that we've got the DAX here. So the DAX is going down, just like this. We draw a trend line. So it's supposed to be a straight line, but I mean, you'll have to forgive me. Um, and when we kind of go back to it now, at this level there, well, we would bet for the DAX to go uh, south still, as we are on the trend line. Uh, and at this level here, what happens? Well, the DAX decides to break the trend line. So we, under normal circumstances, well, we'd have our stop loss over the previous highs, which is here. Uh, but we can determine this as a stop alert, which is uh, uh, an advice, shall we say, that we're reaching this level. And at this level, the loss that's materialized would take a hedge position. Now, if we go on a higher time frame, a higher time frame could put a trend line at this level. Oh, I've got a few messages there saying that you cannot hear. Uh, can you just uh, put a Y in your text in your chat box if you can hear? Just put a Y for me. I've got a couple of people. Yeah, Y, Y. Anyone else? I mean, yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be fine there. So, uh, if you can, if you cannot hear me, maybe you've got a problem with your um, uh, speakers. Uh, I'll double check that for you. But, I mean, all the Ys that have come in now, it seems like uh, we're nicely, uh, everything's working fine. Right, so I mean, let's continue what I was saying here. Let's say we were going to take a short position at this level, and uh, we've got a higher time frame, a trend line there. So I mean, let's materialize that the loss that's represented between this point here and this point there is the maximum loss we want to do. At this level, what do we do? We hedge, and we're going to hedge until we reach the upper trend line on the higher time scale. Now, at this level, the uh, DAX will do two things. I mean, I'm, I say the DAX because I'm always trading the DAX, but I mean, uh, it could, that works with any uh, product, i.e. Like Euro, US dollar, etc. Uh, here, what we're hoping for is uh, basically to maintain the, um, uh, the downtrend that we've got and to continue our way down. We have identified this trend line. We're going to go through this tonight a bit later. And as such, we know it's there. As such, we know that we should go down. It should serve uh, as a resistance on the DAX. So at this level, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the buy position that we've got, the hedge, and uh, we're going to maintain our short that is at this level. Uh, it goes our way, it goes back down, and our sh we've got quite a bit of profit for this upwards movement, and then we'll make profit eventually when we reach the bottom there again. Should it not hold at this level here, that's what I was talking to you about, so we've got, let's say, a daily trend line, so if your daily trend line is broken, uh, then as such, uh, that means that we're not going to go down for quite some time. Well, at this level here, we've got to cut this loss. We're not going to maintain it. So we're not going to close it immediately. We're going to go through a few uh, uh, techniques to do this. I'll explain why, but usually what uh, the DAX would do, or any once again, any uh, product would do, is it would break it, it'd go back to it, and then we'd continue our way up. So, I mean, we wouldn't close here. What we'd do is we'd wait for the bounce. So the bounce would be a bit lower, so we'd minimize, shall we say, the loss on this position. So we'd let it go, we'd keep this buy position open, and when we reach this point and we're about to bounce back, at this level, we close our sell uh, position that we've got here in the red. We've got to do it. I mean, we're not going to hang on to a toxic position. We keep our buy, and then obviously the profit that we're going to get will uh, be a lot higher than the loss that we've materialized on this. I mean, this is uh, the way of uh, having a plan B on your trade. But obviously, in order for you to have a plan B, you've got to know where the trend, li trend lines are and uh, where to make the decisions to either keep it, uh, keep a position or close it, as just like that. So, yeah, hedging is a complex strategy. It can backfire. If you don't know where it's going to hit, where your trend lines are, where there could be a reversal, then uh, you're going to end up with uh, two positions, one in either way, and not know when to close it, not know which one to keep, which one not to keep, and what you'll have is two positions with a loss. Unfortunately, that's what happens. So let's have a look here. Here we've got a nice little position. Uh, this is the Euro US dollar chart. I mean, on the Euro US dollar daily chart that you can see here, we're looking from the 7th of April 2014 to the position now. Uh, that was last Friday, so uh, yeah, we're looking at the 14th of November. So let's say that here we're in a nice upwards trend as we were. I'll just take my pen. And uh, we've got a uh, support a resistance level here. So we broke this resistance level at this point there, and as such, this is an indication that we can go long. So a lot of people would do that. 
just got a question about how you identify a trend line. I mean, George, I'm going to ident I'm going to teach you how to draw trend lines in a little bit. You know, in about 10, about 15 minutes from now, we'll be drawing it live on charts. So I'll show you how to draw and how to identify the trend line. So uh, yeah, so as I was saying here, what we do at this point, we've broken a uh, resistance level. Uh, we've gone through it, and as such, we say, well, excellent. This is a good point to take a buy position. Uh, people do, and they place their stop loss here which is below the previous lows. And then uh, what happens? Well, basically the market goes the other way. We don't want it to hit, so we extend. What are we going to do? Well, I mean, as this popular investor said to me once, I never close in red, so what am I going to do? I mean, look at the date, eh? We're in April. So, uh, yeah, I never close in red. Uh, what I want to do, I, I've entered here. Uh, I'm going to keep it. Oh, that's it. It's going back up the way I want it to go. That's excellent. But no, it's going the other way again. So what am I going to do? I'm going to extend again and again. And eventually what this, this is what happens. I mean, it's inevitable. You extend, extend, extend until you blow your account. Now, when someone says, I'll hedge, be careful. If you're copying someone who says, I'm going to hedge, they've got to know to what level. If they can't answer, well, what is your determining uh, point level? I mean, when would you, you close your hedge? When would you keep it? When would you close your position that's short. I mean, unfortunately, when you hedge, normally one position, if, it, if you have a change of trend, then one position you've got will be red. The other one, though, uh, will be green and will be a lot greener, shall we say, uh, than the red one. So as such, you won't have a loss. But you'll have to know how to close a position in the red. I mean, that's something that traders do all the time. It's part of the business. I, I personally look at it like a business expense. I used to have a business before being a trader. Uh, and as such, uh, well, you've got business expenses. For me, when you trade, a loss is a business expense. It's as simple as that. Uh, you always have them, and you'll always have them too. I mean, uh, it's impossible to trade and to win them all. I mean, if you try and do that, the market will chew you up and throw you out pretty quickly. So, I mean, in this case, for example, here we are now. I mean, uh, 25, 22 level, 5th, 14th of November, obviously, that was at the close. Uh, this person entered long in April and is hanging on to it. So, I mean, I suppose that their retoro position would look like something like minus four or five thousand percent. But they'd say, don't worry, the market's got to go back my way. I mean, personally, euro, US dollar, I see 117, 160 uh, coming uh, in the coming months. So, I mean, uh, this position would be a position, a toxic position that should have been closed quite some time ago. Where would it have been? Then, I mean, you've, once again, we would have done the trend lines that we'll go through in a bit. And that is how it works. Now, ignoring larger time frames, that is a very uh, bad ha big bad habit too. I mean, I'd say this is the most important, uh, the worst habit of them all, because obviously the large time frame gives us the big picture, the way uh, the course of the DAX or any other product is going. So, I mean, in total honesty, I mean, uh, the you traders out there, do you look at charts? Do you look at the monthly chart, weekly chart, or daily chart? I mean, put a Y if you do it or an N if you don't do it, and please be honest. Yeah, excellent, yeah, good. For those of you who do it, then excellent. For those of you who don't, I've had quite a few no's too. But uh, basically, these larger time frames will give you a big picture and will tell you, obviously, what uh, the uh, main trend or main uh, direction of a position is. Now, uh, okay, for those of you who don't know how to check the charts, I mean, we'll have another webinar to use uh, a software which is MetaTrader MT4. It's free software. Uh, unfortunately, eToro doesn't provide it uh, as such because they've got their web trader platform. I will give you a few links. I mean, I, I'm not affiliated to any broker at all. I don't get any commission whatsoever. So I'll give you a few links how to do it. We'll even do a webinar, which could be a good idea, on how to use MT4. Uh, and as such, uh, you'll be able to check the charts which is uh, something you've got to do in order to take a position. You can do it now on eToro charts. You don't need MT4 to start trading. So with what I'm going to teach you tonight and what you're going to see tonight, you'll be able to do it with, uh, with the eToro charts. And you can actually see the uh, uh, weekly, daily, and I suppose monthly uh, timeframes on eToro charts too. So I mean, uh, very important for you to do this, as I said, because you get the big picture and it tells you which direction to trade. And if we've identified a trend on the monthly, weekly, or daily chart, let's say the trend is down, then we don't want to be taking long positions on the 30 minute, on the hourly, or on the 15 or 5 minute. I mean, usually I work on 15 minutes or 30 minute charts, uh, and I always work in the direction of the trend. Remember, I mean, they always say that the trend is your friend. 
So have a look here. This is the exact same euro US dollar that we saw earlier on. Uh, we saw earlier on the daily time frame. This here is the weekly time frame. And as such, when we've got a weekly time frame, we can actually see what the big picture is. As you can see, we've got two lines here. If you see them, there's two red lines. These are major weekly uh, supports. Uh, it bounced back three times on it, and then eventually we broke it. Now at this point here, I'll just... Um, at this point here, we break it, and this has uh, obviously unleashed a very uh, important uh, force to the downside on the weekly time frame, uh, and as such, a uh, very, shall we say, downwards pressure on the weekly time frame uh, is something that we will be looking at uh, for short trades on smaller time frame charts. This is the MT4, by the way, platform. You'll be able to see that, uh, if you don't know, the, it's very easy to change time frames. All you have to do is... Uh, click on the buttons. I mean, there we're on the weekly. This is for daily, uh, four hour, one hour, 30 minute, 50 minute, five minutes, and then for scalpers, uh, one minute time frame here. So, I mean, it's very easy to, to use the software and no computer knowledge at all required. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's go back to what I was saying. Uh, we break then uh, an important support on weekly. So, as such, we've identified the main trend. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to be shorting, looking for shorting opportunities on lower time frames. This is going to reduce the risk in trading. A lot of people don't do that. Obviously, um, we never go up and down in a trend line, as you can see here. I mean, if I was to um, kind of uh, draw uh, what this does, well, as you can see here, we go up, we go down, we go up, we go down, we go up. We go. So it's never a, uh, a straight line. And when this happens, obviously, well, you haven't identified what a main trend is. And here, for example, we've gone down, we've gone up a bit, then we've gone down, we've gone up a bit. And if you've been taking these longs, then you've been taking very risky trades, and I bet you didn't even know it. So uh, obviously at this point, uh, we're going to ignore those. We're going to just focus on the long downtrend, which you can see here. So this is the hourly chart. These two red lines are the supports we've broken, and as such, we're just going to focus on the lower, um, the lower, uh, the short trades. I mean, when do we know we're going to have these short trades? I mean, we'll see. I mean, obviously, we've got a few techniques that we will see tonight, uh, and uh, as such, you'll be able to determine when a drop is coming, either through chart patterns. Uh, like you would have heard of head and shoulders. You would have heard of uh, Adam and Eve, a double top, triple top, etc. Uh, but also divergences, which we'll also see, uh, which is basically a way to increase probability of something occurring, especially a uh, big drop uh, in uh, the market so I mean here this is these are the trades basically that we would have been taking these black I think these are the ones that I took actually uh, there are quite a few extra ones here for example that I didn't take uh, but the, the ones on the black is uh, quite easy to determine uh, to based on the um, supports so we've got a few supports when these supports are broken well it's obvious what you do is you trade the breakout and we go down Obviously, that's not just what we're looking at. We've got quite a few uh, other indicators for this, uh, but these are the main ones. The other bad habit is not waiting for confirmation. I mean, this is a really bad thing too. I mean, all chart patterns, all breakouts, all divergences need to be confirmed. I mean, quite a few people would have said, uh, well, I've seen a double top, and then all of a sudden, the, the double top, it goes the other way, and um, it doesn't work out. Well, that's basically because... Uh, there was no confirmation. There's specific confirmation for each things uh, that happened. For example, divergences, we use Fibonacci. I'll tell you what Fibonacci is. Don't worry at all. It's just basically a, a set a retracement level tool that we use, uh, which determines that in a movement, shall we say, to the upside, for example, should something go to the upside, then we expect when once it's reached the top, a retracement. So we draw on this chart. Uh, it's automatic, uh, retracement levels, which will basically serve as support on the way down when we retrace. These uh, levels are set at 23.6, 38.2, 50, and so on. I mean, uh, this is something uh, that we will see at a later date. Patience is key. So, I mean, uh, remember, don't make rush decisions. Always wait for confirmation. A lot of people are impatient on the eToro. I mean, I was impatient too until I learned that doesn't take you anywhere. I mean, uh, making money is great, and when you start making it, you want to make more. But unfortunately, that's when you make mistakes like uh, risking too much equity. When you risk too much equity, you lose too much money. If you lose 50% of your account, it will take you 100% effort to get it back. 
So uh, as such, uh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to give your money away. The two important rules of trading is to make a profit. And the second one, which is basically even more important than the first one, is to keep it, which is something that a lot of people don't do. Over trading. Now, I mean, this is one that we often see. I mean, I'm amazed when I see certain accounts. Uh, and uh, if I go through their uh, portfolio of open positions, we've got a list maybe of about 50 trades. I mean, this is incredible. I mean, every time you, you, you trade, if you do it properly, you've studied your trade. You've got a kind of a course of action, as we said. You've got your take profit that is set at a strategic point. Your stop loss uh, set at a strategic point or stop alert if we're going to hedge. And uh, obviously, uh, you've got your plan B. Now, you, in order for you to have a plan B, you've got to identify trends. You've got to know when we're going to be turning, going with specific way or different one. Uh, so if you've got 50 positions, I mean, uh, personally, I trade the DAX mainly. Uh, and as such, I've really identified the situation with the DAX. So, I mean, I'm really comfortable when I take a position and I don't feel nervous because obviously uh, I know where my trend lines are. I know uh, when we should have a change of direction, when which way we should go. But what I, I wouldn't know is if I had 50 positions, for example, 10 DAX, 10 CAC 40, 10 Dow Jones, uh, 10 Euro US dollar, even more, say I was trading Euro, Japanese yen. I mean, that's that's fine. But you really got to uh, do it the proper way as such uh, when um, when you're going to be trading. And I doubt that you've been applying your trading plan or strategy on all these trades. So you open a trade. What do you do? You expect it to go your way. And if it doesn't, you go into hope mode, as I call it. And uh, as such, what happens? Well, simply uh, it goes the other way and you're going to lose your account. End up with 40, sorry, uh, minus 100, minus 200 percent trades and you're going to risk and eventually blow your account. I mean, we see that with a lot of, of traders that, uh, unfortunately, they do have good strategies. It does work. But uh, well, you ask yourself a question when you look at their history. Why is it possible that uh, over the last three years, they've blown the account two times, three times? I mean, yeah, I mean, I can see quite a few of you are giving me examples of names. I won't tell them, unfortunately. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, these people, I know them, and uh, well, that's what they've done. And they've caused a lot of uh, losses, shall we say, simply because uh, they didn't uh, apply their strategy or their money, um, money management strategy, shall we say, uh, and overexposed their equity and blew their account. So, I mean, another thing important is that don't believe that you can't be wrong. I mean, one thing is for sure, you draw your trend lines, you know uh, that you've got your target point, you've got your stop loss. Uh, but markets can go against us. It does happen, and it happens a lot when we've got some kind of fundamental analysis. Say, for example, now we were in a very strong upwards trend with the DAX, which is not the case, but let's, for the sake of argument, uh, suppose that that's the case. We've got a very nice long position on the DAX, and then what happens? Let's say that tomorrow, touch wood, uh, Russia declares war on uh, Ukraine and uh, as such on, the, you know, let's say Europe. <laughs> So uh, we've got a massive scale leading to World War Three. Well, I, you can bet your bottom dollar that our long uh, upwards trend will reach a uh, premature end. Uh, and as such, well, it's gone against us. I mean, that was a, a very exaggerated uh, situation or example, shall we say. But uh, things like that do happen, and it can be just based on a few companies too. Remember that uh, indices represent companies. So if there's scandals, problems with companies, then it can go against us. So as such, uh, do accept it. I mean, you can you can go against us. We can be wrong, and we don't want to be greedy. We want to always uh, have, um, uh, let's say, a plan B in order for us to minimize our risks. Not having a trading plan. I mean, that's something that I'm pretty sure, um, well, let's say that none of us have, especially not at this stage. I mean, this is something that we don't really know possibly what is. I mean, do any traders out there listening to this tonight have a trading plan? If you have, you know, write why. If you don't, we'll put me no and okay. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't seen a single why. Exactly. Do okay. So, oh yeah, we've got one, Julian. Excellent. Well, well done for you. I'm uh, glad. Uh, right. So, I mean, this question isn't for you, uh, Julian. It's for the rest. Uh, could you please uh, put a why if you know what a trading plan is, and if you don't know what a trading plan is. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, well, uh, I can see why. Yes and no. I mean, uh, <laughs> yes and no. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, I mean, what I'll do is I'll just give you a brief example of what a trading plan is. Uh, eventually, for those of you interested, uh, I can actually send you my trading plan. Uh, obviously, it's not really good for you to have it because uh, it's something that is personal. It's molded to your your trading style. What I do here is I'm going to give you a trading strategy. I'm going to tell you how to do it, what to look out for, but you are going to kind of adapt that trading strategy to what you're comfortable with. So, I mean, I might be doing it one way. I'm going to tell you what to look out for. You will be looking out for these aspects when trading, but you'll be changing a few, you know, certain things. If you want to have a bit more of an aggressive approach when trading, you might want to enter position a bit sooner than I would. If you've got more of a kind of a, a prudent approach when you're trading, then you might wait for extra confirmations that I necessarily won't wait for. So, I mean, uh, all this is something important uh, for you to do. A trading plan, it was basically a bit like a business plan. What you're doing is you're going to describe, you do it in writing. You don't just think about it. You've got to write it down. You write down your strategy, what you look out for on charts, how you look out for it, indicators you'll be using, how you'll be using them the maximum size of the trades you'll allow yourself to take uh, with accordance in accordance to your equity etc so let's say you've got an equity of whatever uh, you can start trading with two hundred dollars if you want but in that case you're not going to be leveraging at all uh, but uh, what you're going to be doing basically is determining what percentage of that you're going to risk in each trade now if you set this to a 10 percent risk I mean for me that's huge you can do it I mean especially if you've got a small amount I mean you don't want to be trading for cents you'll be wanting to risk a bit more of that capital so let's say you set 10 percent well that's going to be 10 percent uh, risk shall we say uh, per I call it trading session you're not going to open 10 positions at 10 percent uh, risk each because what you're going to do is you're going to risk 100 percent of your equity in that session and as such if it all goes the wrong way if you haven't diversified you've lost and you've blown your account so I mean you're going to risk that per trading session which is when you start trading so all this is very important uh, it's got to be done I help you do it I mean if you've got any questions I mean my email is uh, david at dhtrader.com I'll put it a bit further on I think on the last slide you'll see it uh, so please send me all your your emails I mean it's always I'm always glad to receive them and to help you uh, with any questions that you've got right then let's give ourselves two minutes I'm gonna have a glass of water uh, if you've got any questions please write them down in the chat box now with regards to what we've seen so far if you haven't that's great uh, I'll just give you a minute or two to write them down. I'll have a glass of water and then I'll uh, come back, read them, answer them now. Uh, if uh, there aren't any, then good, we'll just move on. So uh, just a minute or two and I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay then, right, I've got a few questions. I uh, don't think there are too many, so it won't take too long to answer. So uh, let's go down, right, okay then. Uh, when using Fibonacci retracement, do you use them on all charts? All on the charts to spot for the support line. Okay, uh, so basically Fibonacci retracement uh, is something that we use at a specific point. Um, when a, um, let's say the DAX or the Euro US dollar is going up or down, uh, we've got to wait for it to make a top 
and that, that top we're not just going to trace a Fibonacci retracement levels and use them as supports. We'll only be doing that when we're in the situation, precise situation which is the case of a divergence. Now what is a divergence? No, I'm not going to tell you now because we're going to go through it in about five or ten minutes. But at this level when we've identified a divergence in the market this is when we trace Fibonacci and Fibonacci is going to give us entry levels and take profit levels. Uh, so uh, that's the for the use or the, at least the use that I give uh, Fibonacci. When trading stats I do trace Fibonacci but once again once we've reached a specific uh, level which is the sigma over bought or over saw uh, level once again we've got uh, an indicator for that MT4 I'll pass them to you no problem at all I'll put them they'll be readily available on the website for download. Uh, with regards to the referendum on the 30th of November, you mentioned gold would go in an uptrend, yet I've been studying the charts and the long-term trend points downwards. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, uh, Kim, for this question, uh, that's what I was talking to you about, uh, fundamental analysis. Uh, you Technical analysis, I'd say, is 90% uh, uh, the best analysis you could do, but that 10% will actually blow your 90% when it happens. Fortunately, it doesn't happen too often. And now, trading gold and silver, I mean, these are trades that I tend to avoid because, I mean, uh, everyone's got their own view on this, but the gold and the silver markets are heavily manipulated markets. Uh, we're trading paper, paper contracts, and as such, uh, these can be easily created and do not reflect the real level of stock uh, at the COMEX for gold uh, or at GLD. So as such, uh, it's easy for someone or an institution like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs to create, well, fake, shall we say, uh, gold contracts, flood the market with them and crash the price of gold. Why would they do something like that? I mean, they're not just doing it because they want to, they're doing it because they've got many contracts to honor and when investors or traders start to request delivery of their gold purchases, then unfortunately that's when, uh, well, I mean, I hope I haven't got uh, kids here, I don't think, but that's when the shit hit the fans. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, that's uh, the reason why they're suppressing the price of gold. Uh, they're also doing this because obviously uh, gold doesn't go up and down in price. Gold uh, has its intrinsic value, and as such, uh, if the price goes up, it's because your money is losing value. A lot of people do not realize this, but say you've got euros or you've got US dollars, uh, you want to buy an ounce of gold, an ounce of gold now, which is roughly at uh, the 11,050 region. Uh, quite some, a few months ago, it was over 1,300. It went up to 15, I believe. Uh, and as such, well, what happened? Well, your your money, your your US dollars lost value uh, ne compared to the, the gold. Uh, and that's something they don't want to do. They've been defending the dollar uh, during the past year at a tremendous amount. They've been pumping money. They've been stimulating the US dollar as such. Uh, and unfortunately, an increase in the price of gold uh, would uh, mean that the dollar would fall. So, I mean, uh, that's uh, something else that I would recommend uh, people to do. I mean, I do it on a personal basis. Uh, any extra money, I wouldn't keep uh, dollars, uh, shall we say, in savings accounts or euros or pounds as such. I mean, money is that. It's a piece of paper. Uh, and it's printed on it, it's got no intrinsic value, uh, I would recommend buy a few ounces of silver coins, uh, gold coins, uh, that will never lose value and the uh, reason behind that is you can see through history, I mean if you look back a uh, hundred years ago with an ounce of gold you could buy a suit, like a tailor-made suit. Nowadays, if you had an ounce of gold, well, you could buy a bit more than a suit, I'd say. Uh, and that doesn't mean that your gold has shut up in value. It means that your money uh, has lost value. And as such, well, gives you an idea of what best, uh, what best ways to preserve your uh, finances would be. So let's have a look at uh, future questions. Hi, David. Firstly, many thanks for doing this. No, my pleasure. I have a question around the future webinars. Will the invite be sent to the end of tonight for the next one to introduce? Okay, well, as such, I mean, uh, I wasn't quite sure if this would be a success. It does seem it was one. Uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, you know, for being there too. Uh, so, I mean, uh, yeah, we will be doing future webinars for you to understand the um, uh, the strategy that we're using. I mean, we'll, I'll be sending invitations uh, to the people interested for this. So, I mean, uh, you've got my email address. You can see it on the screen now, david at dhradio.com. Don't hesitate to, if you are really interested in these webinars, to send me, drop me a line, and I will send you invitations directly through to your emails 
uh, mailboxes so that uh, you'll be sure to get in no problem nevertheless I mean now we are I think we're showing full now yeah we are showing full so I mean unfortunately if people are trying to log on at this this point uh, then they wouldn't be able to uh, but uh, under normal circumstances I'm recording so we should be able to uh, put it online let's see um, uh, Do you or do you have considered doing one-to-one -one tuitions? No, I haven't done. I haven't considered this yet. I mean, um, what I, I mean to give you a bit of uh, of background, shall we say, on myself. Uh, I used to be. I mean, I still am a business owner. I've got an import-export business. Uh, I don't really get involved now. I mean, unfortunately, I've got a few people working for me, so they deal with it. I just uh, uh, suck up the profits uh, and uh, I spend my, all my time trading I mean I trade from home this is where I do it. I've got my trading station here uh, and uh, as such I've got a few people uh, interested and my next point would have been to create a hedge fund uh, so I mean that's what I was looking at then I uh, had a look at eToro I mean eToro is a let's say it takes the boredom out of trading because trading can be very bore, boring too bit like uh, working for example for the police I mean you don't always get a call to go somewhere so I mean when you're sitting in your car eating donuts can be a bit boring trading's the same when you're waiting for something to happen then you don't over trade you do wait for it patience is key uh, and as such uh, that's when eToro is pretty good because I mean it adds a social aspect and makes trading a bit less lonely shall we say so I mean uh, yeah I mean one-to-one -one tuition that's something that I would do uh, I haven't thought about it at this point uh, but yeah, definitely something that I would consider. Okay. Well, then, okay. Expect gold to go down to one thousand dollars point. Is that an opinion you would support? Yeah, I mean that's possible. I mean, all depends. That's what I was talking to you about the gold earlier on. Uh, my views are mixed there, but um, I do believe that they're trying to suppress the price of gold through manipulation, gold manipulation. The paper markets are rigged. So, I mean, uh, as such, it's, it is possible that we would reach this. I trend to avoid uh, trading gold unless we've got a very clear and risk-free trade. But, uh, yeah, it's possible because, obviously, knocking the price of gold down means the price of the dollar goes up, and that's uh, the, what they want to do in the end. Is the Jura 30 still going to go down? Definitely. Thank you. Well, thank you. I've got loads of thank you message. Will this go up on YouTube? Yeah, I'll try and put it on. Got a few requests for one-to-one. -one. Thanks for that. Yeah, no problem. What do I think about the DAX? DAX down. Yeah, the DAX will definitely go down. We'll be looking at it in a bit. Excellent. Right, okay, then let's move on. If I haven't answered your question, then I am sorry. Do email it to David at DH Trader. It'll be a pleasure for me to answer. Right then, I mean, I'm going to go really quick now uh, because, I mean, these are basics and this is information that you can find online. So don't get bored. Bear with me if you've got a bit of knowledge. Uh, don't go. Um, we'll go quick. Basically, we're just going to have a review of what a candlestick is. Uh, a candlestick on a chart is uh, gives us important information. As such, green or red indicates the uh, the position. Like, say, if we've got a, an open here and a close at the top, then we're going up. We've got a green candlestick, the reverse when it's red. We've got a lower wick, which indicates uh, the lowest uh, level that we've had during the uh, opening of the candlestick. The higher wick is the opposite. And that's the information that it gives us. So, I mean, as such, uh, this, this is information you can find online. Uh, we've also got candlestick patterns. This is what you can see on your screen right now. I mean, uh, these patterns are patterns that I don't necessarily use a lot. I mean, quite a few will be surprised. Uh, but yet, this is something that I do not really use. Now, a candlestick pattern is just a pattern formed of about two or three candlesticks. I mean, it does give us important information. But then again, uh, if you look at these on lower time frame charts, then I don't believe them to be very accurate. I mean, I've tried using them. And as such, I mean, through different strategy testing, I found that uh, it gave us information, but uh, let's say on the lower level. I mean, the main thing that we would be looking at is basically uh, chart patterns that we will see in a minute uh, and uh, trend lines, divergences. This is what really works. And this is what I want to share with you. I don't want you to waste your time learning. As you can see, there are quite a few here. Uh, they give them all these fancy names. I mean, an inverted hammer, the gravestone, the dojis, etc. Do, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're taking trading seriously, it's good to know it. I'm not saying it isn't. 
Uh, it's good to know that gaps, for example, usually here you can see we've got a gap to the downside, uh, is usually fulfilled. I mean, quite a few of you would have realized this when we trade, that uh, when we open, let's say that we close here, all of a sudden we've got a gap and we open here. I mean, it can go up a little bit more, but eventually either during the day or in the next days to come, this gap is closed. I mean, that's something the market in the 99% of, of the time uh, will do. It will always close this gap. And a lot of people trade gaps. I do too, uh, but I do it in certain conditions, not in, you know, it's not because I've seen it's just open with a gap that immediately I go short. And apart from that too, there is a lag with eToro which won't enable you to trade uh, just on opening. It kind of waits for about two to three minutes before you can open trades. Uh, and usually, if the gaps are small, by then the gap's been closed already and then we're going the other way or whatever. So, I mean, yeah, um, trading gaps is good, but uh, this got, it's got to be done in a specific way. Right then, chart analysis. Now, I mean, chart patterns, this is, this is important. Uh, this is something I use, uh, something that has uh, worked out to be really profitable. Uh, and uh, basically will increase your probability of achieving winning trades. I mean, it's important for you to know how to identify them, uh, and it's something that you'll be able to do in time. I mean, do not worry at first when, you know, it'll be important uh, or, let's say, difficult for you to, to, to find a, a specific pattern on the chart, uh, but with time and practice, you'll see that you'll identify them really quickly, and uh, you'll have a habit or get in the habit of, of doing this. Uh, higher time frames, once again, I mean, for those uh, in the bad habits that ignored the higher time frames, I mean, if we see charts on a higher time frame, uh, they're more reliable, and on top of that, a higher time frame means that uh, we've got a bigger time frame of movement. So, I mean, if uh, we are on a weekly chart, for example, uh, and we see a, a chart pattern, then this is going to give us an objective, which is usually uh, quite far down or quite far up. Uh, but remember, we're looking at a weekly time frame, so it could take a few weeks. Let's say two or three candles, which would represent two or three weeks to reach it. Uh, but then again, your gain will be a lot more than uh, just a few pips or a few points. So, chart. This is uh, the let's say the the most common uh, uh, chart pattern that we see: a double top or a double uh, bottom. I mean, uh, it's quite easy to trade these. What happens is that we've simply got a kind of a double top that is created. Sometimes you can go a little bit higher. It doesn't have to be the exact same uh, level here. Then we've got the neckline. When the neckline is broken here, as you can see, this is our entry point, and our target would be the distance between the, the neckline and the top. We just, uh, if this is, for example, 50 pips, then we will just refer to 50 pips down, and this is where we put our TP. So, I mean, this will tell us when to enter. So we enter when we break the trend line. Now, breaking the trend line, remember that we wait for confirmation all the time. So waiting for confirmation means that we've got to have a candle that closes below the neckline. So when we've got a closure, and not just a candle that's got the wick below the neckline, because this is, uh, for example, uh, bear pressure, shall we say, but the bulls are still in power, and it hasn't closed below. So as such, we're not going to do it until our candle actually closes below the neckline, and that's when we enter. So we take our entry, we've got our take profit, we've got our stop loss or our stop alert that we put here for our uh, hedging uh, positions, and then eventually we know where to go. Exactly the same in the inverse for the double bottom. So here's an example. This is the Euro US dollar hourly chart. Uh, we just back in April this year here. We had a very nice upwards trend, as you can see. We were going up. I can actually, I mean, if this is the pen, so I mean, I'm not going to do a very, very nice line. But this is basically what we would see. We've got a nice little upwards trend here. We go up. We've created a double top here. As I said to you, it doesn't have to be the exact same level, but this one is pretty fair close. Uh, and that when we reach this point here, I mean, uh, this is a very, very long candle. I mean, there would have been some kind of stats or something here. Uh, we wouldn't have waited for the closure here. What we would have done, obviously, is when the candle is about to uh, finalize, then we would have waited for the candle to be in this area, and we take the entrance. So here, uh, this is the hourly chart. So in the space of three hours, uh, we would have known that 35 pips down, this is where we exit the trade. And as you can see, a lot of people have done it, and that's why we've consolidated at this level. I mean, it's not a kind of a, a coincidence that at this level uh, the market went sideways. It's simply because they've traded this figure. They've traded a double top. Uh, and as such, what you can actually see here is that we formed uh, – I'll just um, get rid of this. 
we formed a double bottom. This is a slight double bottom, but as you can see, uh, it doesn't have to be the same level. We've got a neckline at this point there. Uh, and as such, well, we've got an objective once we break here to go back up considering. Now, how do we determine the level here? Well, I mean, what I do is I average it out. So I actually draw a straight line between the tops and in the middle of the double of the neckline here, I actually draw up and the amount that we've got at this level will determine the amount that we would go up which would basically take us around here, I'd suggest. But uh, that is, for example, a strong indication that at this level here, we're going to go up. We've got another strong indication here, which is a trade that I would have taken, which is simple because we've got a trend line there that we broke. And uh, something that we always do, and we're going to talk about it in a bit when we see trend lines, is that uh, when we break a trend line, we retest it, which means that we, I call it the kiss goodbye. Uh, we go back to it, we kiss it goodbye, and then eventually, as you can see here, we go back down the way we're supposed to go. So, I mean, there, at this level here, we've got first indication is that we've got a double bottom with an objective at this level. And the other thing that I can see is that, obviously, we've got a trend line that we've broken, we've nicely broken, and we should be retested, so we should reach it, as you can see there. So, at this level here, uh, what has happened? I mean, a lot of people didn't take their profits. We didn't consolidate here as we did down there. We've kept it because we knew that we would be retesting this trend line and it would have been absolutely stupid uh, not to uh, keep these extra 20 pips here as a profit. And this is where we consolidate, funnily enough, when we reach the trend line. I mean, all this is chart technical analysis. And as you can see, well, I mean, it works. Uh, it doesn't always work. Don't think that, you know, just because you know how to do it, it'll always go your way. But you're increasing the probabilities of uh, getting winning trades by doing this. Right then. The head and shoulders, this is my favorite. Head and shoulders is my favorite because it gives you, let's say, the possibility of uh, kind of anticipating it. So, I mean, when we do a, uh, an upwards movement there, for example, and then we've, we've got the first uh, left shoulder, we've got the head, and then when we're at this level here and we bounce back on this neckline, which is an important support, uh, this is where you kind of expect, well, right a minute, we've done this left shoulder, this head, now let's see if we actually do a shoulder and I've already identified before doing this extra shoulder here, I've identified that my entry point would be there. So, I mean, you've kind of uh, anticipated a trade, but a trade that you will only take, obviously, if the figure confirms, because at this level here, nothing's to say that we'll continue our way up. So, uh, uh, we, we look at it, but we've kind of anticipated a possibility in order to take a trade and have our target. Now, how do we determine the target? Well, here, what we do is we look at the higher top for the head. Distance between the head and the neckline is the distance that we'll be looking at as a target. And it's the exact same thing for the inverse head and shoulders, but in the opposite way. Let's have a look at the DAX now. I mean, uh, I noticed a few people here were asking me about the DAX earlier on. So you would recognize this is the four hourly chart of the DAX. On the four hourly chart of the DAX on the 15th of October, what did we do? We hit a nice little low. Just get my pen again. That's not the one. We fit a now nice little low here at this level there. And what did we do? Well, you can see it. We've got the left shoulder. This is an inverse head and shoulder. Left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder. And basically, we've got 450 points at this neckline that we broke here. So at this level, which is basically the 21st of October, we had a nice indication, well, buy. And what happens? Well, this here is the 450 level. So as such, uh, you would have kept this uh, from the 21st of October when you entered to the 31st of October, which is when it reached this point. In the space of 10 days, you would have made 450 points on the DAX, just because you've identified a chart pattern. So I mean, as such, this is excellent, uh, a way of doing it, and uh, we'll be seeing at uh, opportunities on the DAX in a few minutes. Uh, as you can see, we've got a nice little figure forming here, which is... Exactly, I can see there, head and shoulders, you're putting it in your chats, that's exactly what's happening now. This is the current uh, level of the DAX where we are now, and we've got a nice little figure forming, which, what should it, what should this indicate? Well, obviously, a movement like this. So, we enter here, we exit here, 
and that is the purpose of the head and shoulders. So I mean when we do chart analysis you always identify the previous trend before looking for reversal patterns. I mean this is very important too, a mistake that I did it and made a few times. A lot of traders make it too and you know, I actually see it for example where people are saying uh, oh we've got a double top uh, on uh, the euro US dollar now but the euro US dollar has been in a downwards trend so if we've got a downwards trend uh, let's say we're going down like this and all of a sudden we form something like this, well this doesn't mean anything because I mean a double top's got to be at the end of an upwards movement as you can see here. We've been nicely coming up, we've got a double top and then this does indicate that we've got a measured target that we're going to hit there. As you can see, if some of you have missed this, what we do here is we've got a major support that we retest, we kiss it goodbye. And as such, what does this usually happen? Well, we can either go back into our upwards movement or we roll over and continue our way down. So this would have been most probably an entry level for a new short. So you could have actually made double money on this where you entered for the double uh, the double top pattern, then you re-enter for the uh, downwards trend. So based on the same level, shall we say, you've made double your money. So yeah, very important. Do not look for, let's say, uh, a head and shoulders uh, level in a downwards trend. If we've got something like that, I mean, that doesn't mean anything either. We could actually go back up. It doesn't mean we're going to continue our way down. A head and shoulders got to be at the top of uh, an upwards trend and an inverse head and shoulders at the bottom of an upwards trend. So we've got it here, basically, as you can see. Uh, Euro, US dollar, we're in a downwards movement, then we're consolidating, and in the consolidation, we've got a double top. Now, a double top and consolidation doesn't mean anything. Uh, it, as it would happen here, we've actually gone down, but that doesn't actually mean that this um, downwards movement was obvious. I mean, no, we could have gone back up, so this is not to be looked at. Right, rising and falling wedges. This is important. I don't usually tend to trend the, uh, to trade those too much uh, because I mean they are a little bit harder to spot, and a bit of volatility can give you a false breakout. Uh, I call them fake outs. So, I mean, if we have a false breakout to the upside here, then uh, we could have had a flag, a uh, pennant pattern. So, I mean, this is a bit complex. I do recommend that you have a look at it. Uh, it is a good idea. But obviously, I mean, that's what I was talking to you about the community. I trend to avoid these trades. You might want to uh, look into them. If you do, that's excellent. But, I mean, then again, please share them with all the rest within the community. Here's an example of these wedges, as I was uh, talking to you about. So, as such, we've got a breakout here a breakout with a kiss goodbye and then a rollover to go back down. So I mean uh, this is an important once again we go back down, we kiss goodbye and then we go again. So I mean there we've got an entry trade obviously at this level. We wait for closure. Closure means that we actually go down here. We could have entered here and then why do we exit at this level? Well because we've got to measure. Measurement is made between the top so we kind of report it back down and that's why it consolidates. So I mean this is a trade that you can take, I tend to avoid them. Adam and Eve nevertheless is a trade that you've got now. The Adam and Eve is a trade that I always take because it, in my experience as a trader uh, it's never really let me down. Uh, it's even when it goes against the major trend when we form an Adam and Eve uh, the force of it usually uh, is pretty good and we always or tend to always reach our target. Now what is an Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve is just a category of double top where we've actually got Adam which is the first or second top which is in a spike and then we've got Eve which is in a kind of a curved situation. This is as I said just like a double top. The target is exactly the same. We've got to look at the highs. This amount here from high to high is the amount that we're going to take to the downside and the neckline is the same. Adam and Eve, this is what we've got here. I don't know, uh, I believe that, yeah, I mean, there was uh, a few people that, uh, I published this on Facebook, uh, sorry, not Facebook, on eToro, uh, informing that an Adam and Eve was forming at this level. We were actually here. I noticed it. I thought, well, let's have a bit of, uh, of a, a play with uh, the eToro social network. And then we actually went down and broke. And I actually published Adam and Eve forming. Uh, take a short position now and then the TP level at this level is where it was met. I mean we enter here, we exit here and we made a bit of money. As you can see this was the message I put on. Uh, I had a few responses there and I believe quite a few people had made a bit of money. So chart patterns they reflect the psychology of the people trading. I mean they don't just happen because you know they do. I mean when you're trading from your computer from your trading station I mean other traders are people too. You you have got computers and especially what they call high frequency trading uh, but uh, these computers are programmed by people so it's people actually determine 
what levels to look out for, how to look out for, for them, and what to do. So, I mean, psychology does play an important role, and I'm going to give you an example. For example, I've, I've been talking about the Kiss Goodbye event when we, we break a trend line. Now, maybe some of you would want to know, well, why does this happen? Well, what happens there? So, as such, I can see your questions. Keep your questions coming in. I mean, I'm not ignoring them. Uh, we'll have a Q&A session in about a minute or so. I mean, I've almost finished this, and then I'll go through them, so I just don't want to interrupt it. Uh, but, yeah, keep them coming in. It's great. So, I mean, uh, what's the psychology behind the uh, kiss goodbye? So, I mean, as you can see, this is the DAX again. As I said, I trade mainly the DAX. The DAX bounces twice on this trend line, as you can see there. So, I mean, we've reached it at this level there. This is where we are now. So, try and and ignore all this and let's say that we are here now at this level what traders would expect is a bounce again they would expect to go back up so I mean that's totally valid we've reached a trend line if they if we do go back up then I mean they're going to make quite a bit of money on the trade because their entry point is optimal uh, and as such what happens well the trend line is broken so I'm just zoomed in for it in it for you there uh, so as such uh, the trend line is broken traders have entered here they've got a long position and what happens, the DAX goes against them. Uh, and as such, they've got negative amount, negative, negative, negative. And then when they reach this, I mean, obviously, when we were at these tops there, here, when we were at these tops, I mean, traders have gone short. They would have found the reason why to go short, and that's where divergences come in. And they would have bet for a short here. They bet for a short. They reached a trend line. There's a bit of consolidation because, obviously, uh, a trend line, it can bounce. So, at this level, some would have closed. They would have reduced the intensity of, of the downwards movement. Nevertheless, the bears won, and, and as such, the trend line was broken. And when we reach these levels there, profit is taken. So, these uh, short sellers at this level there, they've decided to take some profit. And what happens? Well, you close the sell position. That means, I mean, the basic laws of the economy, the supply and demand. Uh, when there's more uh, supply, then the price goes down. When there's more demand, the price goes up. So we go back up. And at this level there, as you can see, all the traders that had entered here, their long positions, uh, well, what has happened? The market's given them their money back because we've gone back to their entry level. Now, as such, how many of you uh, have actually uh, taken a position seen it go red, 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 and as soon as it's back in green, or shall we say you're at zero, uh, you've closed it. You said, oh, I'm happy. The market's giving me my money back. I've closed. If you, I mean, if this has happened to you, put Y in your, uh, in your chat boxes. I mean, I'm sure it's happened to quite a few of you, especially myself. Exactly. Yeah, I can see that. Well, you'd have said it's gone against me. Uh, I've risked a bit of money. I've seen my position go at minus possibly two or $300, uh, even more perhaps. And then all of a sudden, I'm at zero again. Well, what do you do? You close. Well, this is psychology, obviously. And this is what happens here. These buyers, these long buyers here at the break of the trend line, at this point, they're closing. They're saying, oh, good. So as search, well, what happens? Well, they close, and it pushes the DAX down. This is the psychology behind why we kiss goodbye. So, okay. Let's do a quick Q&A. I mean, I put five minutes. It's not going to be five minutes because it's all we've already been here for about just over an hour. I don't want uh, this to go on for too, too long. Uh, so as such, uh, let's. I'll just read a few of your questions right now. Um, if you have any, then just get them in. No problem at all. Okay, when do you think gold will go up? I mean, I'd wait for the 30th of November to answer that one. I'm pretty sure that should the Swiss vote yes, then it will. Will this go on YouTube? Yeah, I think it will. I'm pretty sure it will. Uh, what do you think, Redax? Dax down. Definitely Dax down. I mean, we'll see it in a bit. Uh, do you trade oil? Yeah, sometimes I do tra trade oil. The thing is, oil, when, once again, we're talking about rigged markets. Oil is rigged because uh, it is a way to get at the Russians. I mean, you know that uh, we've got a uh, pre-called war going on now. I mean, Obama is not too happy with Putin, uh, the situation in Ukraine, etc. And as such, they know that uh, the ruble benefits from the, uh, the oil. So if they can manipulate or have the price down, then they are affecting uh, the Russian economy and bringing the, U, the ruble down. How do they um, suppress the price of oil? Well, it's simple, the basic laws of economics. You produce more, you've got the price down. Okay, uh, is, uh, do you always find the trends heading short? The, okay, so do I find the patterns on the uh, H4 charts? No, I use all the charts, daily, even weekly. 
Um, monthly, not really, because I mean, uh, you'd be waiting for a long time, and we'd be going into kind of more of long-term investings. But weekly is the kind of the maximum chart I look at. Daily and H4 is the best. Uh, higher time frames to find it because it will give you a clearer picture and uh, identify the way you want to trend a uh, trade sorry yeah made some money last week following the Adam and Eve great happy about that perfect right okay yeah like the idea of creating the um, community yeah I like that too I thought it was perfect do I trade the FTSE 100 I do trade the FTSE 100 uh, I can, uh, yeah, I, okay, I've seen a few requests for USD CAD, FTSE, oil, uh, I'm not going to actually go into that tonight as such, uh, because, I mean, it would be too long, we'd be here forever, but I could actually do uh, little webinars like that where we just kind of study together charts, that would be quite interesting, make it interactive. Uh, do you use head and shoulders on one minute chart? No, not at all. Uh, one minute charts is just, uh, well, as far as I'm concerned, it's a bit nonsense because, I mean, uh, in volatile markets, some patterns are created that do not uh, represent anything. I never trade the one minute. Uh, the uh, lowest time frame chart I look at from time to time is 15, but I usually take position, uh, sorry, 5, but I usually take position on the 15 or 30. Best way to identify a trend? Well, we're going to look at that now for the trend lines, how we draw a trend line. Uh, um, someone, okay, one to one. I see more one to one requests. What do you think of scalpers? Well, scalpers is the really good way of making money. It's a really good way of losing it too. You've got to know what you're doing, obviously. Uh, I do a bit of scalping from time to time, especially when I'm bored, when the market isn't moving too much. If there's got there's no indication of volatility in the market, then I'll scalp a bit. Uh, you'll see from time to time on my account that I open a DAX long short, usually in the always shall I say in the direction of the trend and I'll only have it for about 60 seconds or so and it's a bit of money pocket money it's pays for the beers in the evening okay it'd be uh, so it'd be dangerous to trade and even oil no 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 I'm not saying it'd be dangerous to trade uh, chart patterns on oil all I'm saying is that uh, you've got to have your plan B uh, especially with the uh, markets like oil or gold so uh, yeah I mean I do look out for these figures on those uh, charts and when I see them I do trade them I'm not saying I don't but uh, just bear in mind that if it goes against you, uh, it's not your fault. It's not because you haven't identified it properly. It's because these markets are a little bit peculiar. What's the max amount percentage you would normally uh, let's, uh, just move down? You normally trade in one trade, and the max you would have open at a time. Okay. Well, as such, I usually try and keep my trades about uh, five percent max of equity. Uh, this is what I try and do. If uh, during a trading session, I try to go to about uh, 10 to maximum 20% of equity uh, per trading session. This is what I try and stick to, which is in my trading plan. If a sell position would be open now in J30, would you TP and stop loss set to... Sorry, I mean, I didn't understand that. If a sell position would be open now in the German 30, would you... What would be a TP and stop loss in my opinion? Oh, okay, so I get the answer. I suppose someone's got a sell position right now on, and they want to know when to close it or when when to close it either in profit or in loss. So, I mean, we're actually going to tell you that in a minute. So you'll see on the charts. German for tomorrow, please. Yeah, we're going to see that in a minute. What's your biggest win, biggest loss? I mean, in percentage-wise, uh, we usually make about 50% equity in a year, sometimes 60 70% when we're lucky. Uh, and we have had years where we've actually lost about 5%. So, I mean, trading is not all about winning. And if I was to tell you that I've been winning all the time, uh, then I would be lying. And that's not the purpose of it. Would be really interested in a webinar to go through how to start trading. Okay, excellent. Yeah, well, we can do a beginner's uh, webinar. Uh, that would be great. That way, we're kind of all at the same level when we do that. And as such, uh, no one would get bored. I saw a trade you made and closed but didn't register in my history. That would be possibly due to the amount you copy me with. I mean, I'm not quite sure how this really works with eToro. I know that uh, if you've got low amounts of uh, copy, then uh, certain small trades, especially when they're really small, uh, won't uh, appear in your accounts. Uh, all you have to do is just increase a bit the amount you're copying with me. Copying me with. Okay, so let's move on because I mean it's getting a bit late. I don't want you to get bored and, and want to go. And this is the most important aspect of tonight: the support and resistance. So I mean, support and resistance. I mean, I'm going to ask you what is a support. I mean, right in your boxes now, what you actually think a support is. Right, write your definition. I mean, what is a support for you? Um, just, just put it in your boxes. Now I have a glass of water. Okay. 
Hmm? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I've got a few answers. Uh, let's have a look. Right, so, I mean, yeah, it's a downtrend bounce, a historical support line, that price was, okay. Uh, I don't know. Excellent. Okay, bamboo came for runner beans, didn't I? Okay, to bought, no. That's when buy overcome sellers, the line of which the trend is going. Okay, so quite a few uh, right answers, a few wrong answers here. Basically, uh, it's pretty simple. Support is an area where the bulls are waiting to reach in order to buy or go long. So uh, if a market is actually going down, we've got uh, our market here. We're going down. We've got a strong support at this level here. Well, the bulls are waiting. They're going to let it go down, let it go down. And when we reach this level, this is the level they're waiting to go long and to bounce, as some of you uh, have said. And the resistance, well, it's the same, but in the other way. A, a support is actually a horizontal line that you trace uh, at the, below the current level of the DAX, or, as I said, once again, of anything. And the resistance is a, a level that you reach when you're going up. So, I mean, when we reach this, the sellers or the bears are waiting to get in in order to go down, to go short. At this point, usually when you reach uh, an area of support or resistance, uh, we consolidate. There's a kind of a battle going on here. They want to go up, go down, go up, go down. And eventually, one will win. Uh, they will prevail. And that's basically what we're waiting for uh, to join, to go up. I mean, us as traders, I mean, we trade small amounts. Even if we've got accounts with about fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars 70000 we're trading small amounts. Uh, our positions that we take will not influence the market. It won't make it move. Uh, so as such, we're little uh, swimmers, little uh, fish, shall we say, uh, trying to kind of wait uh, which direction the shark is going to go to kind of attach ourselves to it and to uh, just uh, take a bit of profit as we go. So, I mean, this is what we do. So uh, what we're going to do now, quickly, I mean, that's a question that I was asked uh, earlier on. Uh, let's identify a few supports and resistance. So now you should actually have a change on your screen. You should see um, the uh, the chart. Actually, we're talking about oil. We've got oil on the screens right now. Uh, and as such, don't look at these green lines. I'll explain what these are, or even these blue in a bit. Just look at the course of uh, the um, the of oil there. So, I mean, how do you draw support and resistance? So, it's really uh, easy to do so. Uh, try and do it on the higher time frames first. At this point here, we're on the daily time frame. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to go from where we are now, uh, and uh, we're going to look for levels where it's bounced. So, here, for example, we've got a level where it's bounced. Uh, we're going to have another one around here. We've got quite a few in between. We've got one here. It's bounced, as you can see. Uh, we've got one up here. where it, There we are. It bounces. We've got a few there. And we kind of, we're identifying zones there where uh, the level has actually, uh, oh, that's a bit high. Uh, the level, I mean, there's kind of a fight between bears and bulls. I mean, the, by doing this, I mean, I can actually put another one here bounces we've actually had a bounce recently there and by doing this uh, how do we draw support resistance well we draw it because it's bounced at least a couple of times on it that's my my rule because uh, usually when we've bounced on it two times possibly three well the third time or, or the fourth it breaks it so I mean uh, something like that as you can see we've bounced once twice it breaks here once twice it breaks that's usually what, what happens with support and resistance. So now we've bounced. I mean, we're in the level here that is between 74.36, 77.24. Uh, so uh, we should consolidate a bit here. Will we be breaking this to the downside or going back up? There are other ways to determine this, and this is where divergences kick in. Uh, so I'll go through those uh, with you in a bit. So it's really easy to, uh, to do this. I mean, I'll just... Um, Let's have a look. For example, this is gold. I mean, gold daily, as you can see, if we were to draw a few supports. Well, let's see where it bounces. Well, it's bounced here. Where did it bounce? Well, it's bounced there. We've got one in between, just there, and as such. So, I mean, uh, as you can see, it's quite easy. Uh, an area of support and resistance is actually that. It's an area. It isn't actually a line. So, I mean, when you are in an area, as you can see, the wick goes up here you can see there this level there that doesn't actually mean that uh, it's broken it closure on top breaks it 
so you've got to wait for confirmation there. Uh, and as such, uh, well, I mean, uh, it's an area. I call it the no-fly zone. So if you have a look here, I would say we've got an area between this there and the higher wick. This area there is an area of support or resistance, and as such is what I call the no-fly zone. I'd wait for closure above this. Uh, so, I mean, uh, as such, uh, it's quite simple to uh, draw your supports and resistances. I'll just take them off because we'll need this later. Right then, so I mean this is for support resistance and now let's look at trend line. So a trend line is an area of support in an upwards trend and a resistance in a downwards trend. I mean a trend line is uh, basically the same but instead of being horizontal uh, it's basically diagonal. If we're in an upwards trend as you can see there I mean it, the course of whatever you're studying bounces on it. If you're in a downwards trend, uh, it goes uh, serves as a resistance. So I mean upwards trend, we draw the trend line underneath, downwards trend on top. So support, upwards trend, resistance, downwards trend. So always remember resistance is at the top, the support is at the bottom. That's very important to know. How do you draw a trend line? Well, usually a trend line, I usually tend to say at least minimum two bounces. I mean you need two anyway to draw a line. But uh, three is the best. Usually they say that with three bounces you validate the trend line. Uh, so uh, the, the unfortunate thing is normally at the third bounce you can break it. So you're leaving it a bit late. So I usually wait for two and then I see what happens at, at the third. So I mean let's have a look here. Who can tell me? What have we got here? What is the trend? Write down in your uh, boxes are we an upwards trend or downwards trend? Write down what you think we're in there. Okay, up, yeah, upwards trend, see that? Okay, so quite a few of you have written, we're in a, I don't know, okay. Well, I mean, um, yeah, upwards trend, I can see. Okay, so for those of you who think we're in an upwards trend, well, I mean, I'm going to tell you, let's draw the trend line. I've just done the trend line here for you. As you can see, the trend line goes from several points where it bounces. It starts here, bounced here, bounced here. So my question to you now is, what is the trend? I'll ask you again. Are we in an upwards trend? <laughs> exactly. I can see. Yeah, no. Downwards trend? Well, maybe not. Downwards. I mean, we could consolidate. We could go into a range, sideways movement. But uh, we're not in an upwards trend anymore. Uh, obviously, we've broken it. And as such, well, uh, we haven't got uh, the trend line. So let's look at what's happened in greater detail. This is the situation of the DAX, for example. Quite a few were asking about it. So we break the current trend that was on the 7th of November this year. We broke the trend line. This is from the 15th of October, as you can see down here. We've had a nice movement to the upside. We've had our head and shoulders. We've reached that top four, the head and shoulders. And what happened? We broke the trend line. So as such, oh, I've got a few questions coming. Okay, I'll answer the questions in a minute. So please uh, don't worry. Okay then. Right, so I mean, as you can see, this is what we were looking at earlier on. We've broken the trend line. Uh, yeah, exactly. We've kissed it goodbye. I can see you, you know, you've uh, remembered that pretty good. So we've kissed the trend line goodbye, 11th of November. So we've retested the trend line, which is something I told you. Remember all these people that have been going long here, all these traders? Well, the market has given them their money back. So what have they done? They've closed it and we've actually gone back down. And what we've got now, I mean, we're looking here at the uh, four hourly charts. Uh, we've actually got a head and shoulders situation. I mean, this is what we've got. And as such, I mean, uh, we've got a neckline here that hasn't been broken yet. But this is the situation today on the 15th of November 2014. So obviously bear in mind that uh, in order for head and shoulders, we need to have a neckline, a neckline that needs to be broken. We need to wait for confirmation. Remember, always wait for confirmation. And confirmation is closure beneath the neckline. And what would this mean? Uh, well, this would mean that uh, if we break below this neckline, then we've got an objective. Uh, we're looking at a daily, uh, sorry, four hourly time frame of 8,960 points on the DAX. So, I mean, we're not talking peanuts here. We've got quite a few, just over uh, 240 points to make on this. So, uh, on a four hourly time frame, this is something we could achieve in the space of three or four days. It all depends if the market works in our favor or not. Uh, but if it does, you can imagine the amount of money. So, I mean, here are your questions. What is the DAX going to do? Where are we going to go from here? I mean, uh, we need to check this, but uh, we've broken the trend line. We've kissed it goodbye. This indicates uh, the end of the upwards trend. 
uh, and as such, well, I mean, we've got a head and shoulders pattern that needs to be validated, but should be validated pretty soon. All we have to do is close below the 9,204 level uh, one day, or in, in the four hourly chart. And if we do that, then you can bet your bottom dollar that we're going down to the 8,960, which is our next objective. So a breakout of a trend line is a very strong reversal signal. So if we break a trend line, that's what we do. Remember, we usually always retest it. So a lot of people will go short. They'll make a bit of money. They'll see the market take it away from them because uh, uh, we kiss it goodbye. So don't always be in a hurry to uh, take a trade when we break a trend line. Uh, we'll always kiss it goodbye. So we'll always have an opportunity to go back in. Sometimes when we go back to the trend line, we can actually go back on the other side. And that means that it was a fake out. We, we falsely broke it, which can happen too. The market can go against us. And as such, well, it's always best. You know, you've waited for the confirmation of the, um, uh, of the kiss goodbye. And as such, uh, you know, it went against you, but you didn't actually take the trade because uh, you saw at this level that instead of bouncing into the other way, uh, we actually um, went back into the upwards trend. Now, what would be confirmation of a kiss goodbye, you know, confirming the breakout? Well, I usually wait for two red candles. So if we've got, once we've done our, uh, our reverse, our, our little pullback or kiss goodbye, if we get two red candles uh, and we start going downwards way, well, for me, this is confirmation that we shouldn't go back above this trend line. So always look for uh, trends on the high time frames, monthly, weekly, daily. I mean, I've been looking on the four hour. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I forgot the four hour. Four hour is as good as daily, if not a little bit better, because it zooms in a bit. So uh, what you can do is you can draw a time, uh, sorry, a trend line on the daily and then look at the four hour. So if you put your daily t uh, trend line on the four hour, you've, it's a bit like zooming in. And as such, this is where you'll take position. You'll wait for a breakout on the four hour and you should be pretty good. If, even if the daily doesn't break it, if the four hour does, uh, then it should be an indication that it should go your way. Nevertheless, if you go down to, for example, uh, lower time frames like the 30 minute, 15 minutes, or even five minutes, uh, the problem we've got here is that it could actually close below it just to, you know, you see yourself go the other way again, a, f a full, false breakout as such, and uh, go on top of it again. So as such, I wouldn't look for breakouts on the lower time frames. Always look for breakouts on higher time frames. In the case of the DAX, we're looking at a four-hour chart, four-hourly chart for a breakout. So it's a pretty strong indication. We've kissed it goodbye and we're consolidating now. We formed our right shoulder on the head and shoulders. So I mean, all these all these uh, factors and signals is telling us that we're going to go down. Uh, we then move on to the lower time frame, which is what I said, and we look for the breakout. So if we did a trend line on the daily, look at the, the four-hourly chart, which is the best one I would use. And then uh, after that, we'll go into the lower time frame like the M30, uh, 30 minute or 15 minutes, which is what I trend on a daily basis, uh, trade on a daily basis. And on those, this is where I'll be taking the short trades. Short if we've identified a short uh, and a downwards trend, obviously. If we're in an upwards trend, then I'll be taking long position. And I'll be ignoring any indication uh, of uh, possibility of short trades. I mean, there will be short movements. Remember, we never go up and down in a straight line. So if we're in a downwards trend, the Elliott Wave theory, I'll just mention it quickly, is a theory that we don't go down like this. We actually go down in a movement of five waves, which is wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and wave five. I mean, there are certain rules to respect with Elliott Wave. We'll see that at a later date. But uh, this is where we move. So we're in a downwards movement. Wave two and wave four, which are these little pullbacks, are always shorter. Uh, you never know how long they're going to last. You kind of know how far up they can't go, obviously. Uh, but as such, these are trades that you should ignore because they're really high-risk trades. And you're actually doing counter-trend trading. And counter-trend trading can be very difficult because uh, when it does go the way that the main trend is, uh, then uh, you'll quickly see your position go to minus 100, minus 200, minus 300, and you won't have time to have a strategy. So, I mean, let's have a look now. I mean, have a quick look on our charts for trend lines. You were asking me earlier on. So, I mean, here, for example, we're on a daily chart. So, I mean, what I would do, I always tend, this is the gold chart daily. I always draw a, a few uh, trend lines. So, I mean, here, for example, on gold, what I would do when I studied this, I would draw this one. This is one trend line that I would look out for. This, remember when I was talking to you about plan B and hedging? I mean, we've got this main one there. I would then draw another one here. So, from these tops to this one 
and uh, this is what I'd be looking at at this level. So I mean, here for example, uh, I would look for gold to possibly go and retest uh, this trend line there. So now that we've drawn this, let's go on the four hourly chart. We've got this, we can actually correct it a bit as you can see, it should be at these tops like that. So I mean here, I would wait for gold, uh, we actually, can anyone see a pattern on the gold chart here? Can anyone recognize if we've got a pattern? Yeah, 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 exactly. We've got uh, an inverted head and shoulders. Left shoulder, yeah, no, I'm afraid not double bottom, it's head and shoulders. Inverse head and shoulders. We've got the uh, left uh, shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder. As such, you can actually see our neckline is there. This is our neckline. We've actually broken the neckline. Neckline, which is an important uh, resistance. This resistance now becomes a support. Uh, and we've got this. Uh, what do we do? What do we do when we break an important support? What does psychology tell us usually? Remember, what was that event we've been talking about now? Yeah, exactly. We're going to kiss it goodbye. Usually, that would be what would happen. So, I mean, at this stage, if you've missed this trade here, don't worry. Gold should actually make your way down a bit. Uh, go back to these levels here. So, between 11.74, 11, call it 11.80, roughly. Uh, and as such, uh, continue its way up. So here, normally, uh, our uh, objective for the trade would be uh, 3446. So we'd be looking to go to 3446. So yeah, we're looking uh, $1,208. So this inverse head and shoulders is telling us that uh, 1208 um, just go up a little bit there should be the level that we're going to reach. So uh, at this point, you can either do two things. You can either, if you're kind of a rush trader, which would be the wrong thing to do, you can enter short, you can enter long now. Entering long, uh, you're actually going to see, which is this kiss goodbye event. I'm pretty sure, I mean, I'd say 75% for sure we're going to go back down a little bit. Uh, and then as such, we're going to go back up with the 1208 level. Now, I mean, I would wait for a pullback to the 12, to 1174 to 1180 level roughly. And at this uh, point, I would actually go long with a take profit at 1208 and have a stop loss below the 1172. So, yeah, 1172 is pretty good. 1171.50 inclusive. inclusive. And uh, at this point, either have plan B or stop loss. If you don't want to have a pl uh, plan B, uh, then you can just set your stop loss at, at this level there. Nevertheless, I pre I'm pretty sure that to what we will be doing though, as we've got a trend line here to be uh, tested, it is a possibility that once we reach the 1208, uh, we'll actually go and touch this trend line to co either continue our way down or to break out and go up. Now remember, Gold, once again, on the 30th of November, we've got the referendum. The referendum uh, it should have a positive effect on gold and push it up. So if it does, a long position is what you want to be in. So, I mean, uh, what I would do on gold if I was to trade it, I wouldn't have a plan B, uh, which is hedging, because, I mean, it, it could spike at an incredible speed. Uh, and if that's the case, then uh, I would uh, prefer to have a long position and not a short position. Uh, I wouldn't be tempted to trade short if we reach this trend line at these levels. What I would do now is I would wait for the pullback, trade long around here, and then keep the trade, possibly take some profit uh, at this level, but keep the trade running. And then when uh, we reach the 30th of November, if we are above uh, this uh, important uh, objective that we had here that will become uh, support, then I would use put a stop loss just below it. And if we crash it, down because they voted against it, which I doubt they would, the Swiss anyway, then it would just kill me out of the trade. Uh, but we're looking at about a couple of dollars uh, difference, shall we say, or loss, stop loss on this trade when we've just made the equivalent of uh, 20 bucks uh, difference per trade on the gold. So, I mean, here we've got a perfect setup for the trade. And uh, to be completely honest with you, I hadn't seen it. I've just uh, seen it now. We're talking with, with you. And uh, this is basically the purpose of these webinars I want to do, which is basically studying the charts with you. You can actually see different things. I mean, I've, oh, yeah, okay, no problem. I will be doing USDCAD in an example. Don't worry. Uh, and that's basically how uh, we draw the trend line. So should we uh, break this trend line there? Let's imagine, for example, not considering the referendum on the uh, 30th of November. Should we reach this trend line and uh, want to take a short position here? Uh, let's say we do. Um, and it goes against us and we break this trend line. Then if you remember, we've identified another one. So I mean, our plan B would be between these two. 
at this point here we've broken it so I would wait for the, the kiss goodbye so to retest it and if we actually if it was a fake out and it goes back in then perfect if it bounces and I get two greens I hedge I take a long position and reaching this level would be the level where I make a decision whether to keep it because you break it and we continue or to close it and then we go back the way I want it to go we maintain our downwards trend and we may eventually make money on the short we had there so I mean if we maintain our downwards trend we've actually made money even with a little long that we've had here which was pretty good so I mean we've maximized our profits if uh, it breaks this one too then this was the major one uh, we would be entering a long up uh, sorry an upwards trend there and at this level here I would be tempted to take another long position uh, to uh, counteract this longwards move and I would definitely close this one here I wouldn't keep a toxic short position that I've opened there close it with a loss so, I mean we're looking at a 12.22 close it around the 12.30 odd so we've got about uh, $15 uh, there but uh, obviously we've opened two longs one that is already in profit for this amount which maxes basically uh, roughly the uh, the loss that we've had plus a new one there for profit so I mean uh, that's basically what we do we try and protect the, our equity uh, on the trades which is the purpose of hedging right then so I mean now that we've identified uh, we've identified now three ways to uh, identify the trend reversal. I mean we've got a chart pattern. Uh, the chart pattern was is telling us. I mean a double top, head and shoulders, Adam and Eve, etc. I mean this is telling us we're going to have a trend reversal, a breakout of a support or resistance. This usually tells us again that we're going to have trend reversal or it's going to tell us which way the trend is going to be. So I mean if we were coming down, we've consolidated, we've had a kind of a a support that's broken and we're continuing our way down so I mean this identifies a trend or the break of a trend line and that's what we've just seen now when we break it then uh, obviously we kiss it goodbye and usually uh, this is confirmation that uh, we go we've broken the upwards or downwards trend and we're heading the different way now I mean the question that else is what else can we use I mean we've got a lot of information here and already I can guarantee that all of you that are following the webinar now uh, you know about 90 percent more <laughs> of what all the other people on eToro know now. I mean, you know what to look for, you know how to look for it. Uh, we'll go into detail in future webinars, obviously, on, on techniques and how to do it, but you've got a big picture, which is really good. And the amount of knowledge that you've got just with these, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's already an hour and a half we've been doing this, but nevertheless, uh, the amount of knowledge that you've gained now is quite good, quite important. But uh, what else can be used? Divergences. Now, divergences is something uh, that is pretty good. It's a really good indicator. It tells you the probability of uh, a trend reversal and uh, it also tells you the continuation of a trend too. Uh, this is something that I use all the time, divergence. Uh, it seems possibly a little bit complicated. This is what I'm going to say to you. I mean, don't uh, be scared. Uh, if you don't understand it now, I mean, for divergences, I'm going to do, definitely going to do just a webinar just on divergences, but I'm going to give you a, a roughly an idea. Even if you don't use divergences at this level now, with what you've seen with breakouts of trend lines, uh, breakouts of support resistance, the uh, head and shoulders, etc. I mean, if you have a look, for example, at the case of the DAX, we've already identified that if we break the neckline of the head and shoulders we've got now, then 8,960 is our target. And as such, we should uh, be able to reach it within the following days. And we haven't actually seen divergences there. We don't even know what they are. So, I mean, as such, uh, divergence, well, this is what it is. I mean, as you can see, we're in using an indicator, which is uh, the stochastic. So, momentum plays a key role in assessing trend strength. Usually what we do, I mean, I've put a bit of information on the screen for you to read now. But uh, uh, what we do is we're going to try and study what the strength of the momentum of the uptrend or the downtrend is. I mean, uh, are many uh, bulls in play? Are many bears in play? I mean, what is the situation? Are a lot of people buying, a lot of people selling. We're not looking at volumes. Volume doesn't, you know, doesn't serve any purpose as far as I'm concerned in Forex. Uh, what we're looking at basically is uh, the situation of overbought, oversold on stochastics. We'll be using a few um, indicators for this. We're using the stochastics out of settings of 14, 3, and 5. For, for those who are using MT4, just make a note of that. For those of you who are not using MT4, uh, you can actually set this on uh, eToro charts. Uh, so you can make a quick note. Uh, what we want to do is we want to add the indicator of stochastics on the chart with the 14, 3, and 5 settings. We're going to be adding the Bollinger Bands with the 20 setting. And Fibonacci retracement, so that's an indicator we'll be drawing on it uh, for the, the validation of the divergences. 
So as such, uh, what have we got? So stochastics, here is a bit of an information of what it is. Uh, I mean, this is just a bit of, of uh, info for you. I mean, it's an oscillator. Uh, it actually gives you information, you know, of peaks in price, if we're closing price trend to approach the daily highs, vice versa. Stochastics is a leading indicator. It kind of generates signal before they appear. Uh, so, I mean, you can actually see if uh, the force of an upwards movement or downwards movement is really strong or if it isn't. Uh, and it tells you basically a way of how to determine if a market is in an overbought situation or an oversold situation. Uh, sorry, yeah, the settings uh, for the uh, stochastics 14, 3 and 5. So don't, don't worry about that. You can always ask me once you're on eToro. Uh, if you're trying to configure your charts, uh, just drop a note on my eToro wall and I'll go through that with you again. But stochastics 14, 3, 5 uh, and Bollinger Bands 20. So what are Bollinger Bands? I mean, Bollinger Bands basically is a center line that you see. This is a moving average, an exponential moving average, which is a 20 moving average. It, it kind of uh, does a sum up of the 20 last closing price of the candles, and you've got a line. So it's a moving average. We've got two uh, lines on the outsides of the uh, chart. We've got an upper one and a lower one, and it basically the uh, court, the value of your product, either DAX or whatever, tends to trade within it. Uh, there is always a possibility that it comes out of it. Uh, usually, uh, market these are for volatile movements, and markets have got very slow, well, very low uh, tolerance for volatile movements. And as such, if we exit the uh, Bollinger Bands, then uh, we say that only five percent of the time uh, we will be trading outside of them. So we'll see what the Bollinger Bands in a few minutes. Here, as you can see. What we've got is the DAX once again. Uh, as you can see these green lines there, the middle one is the 20 moving average and the upper and downwards um, uh, channel there, I mean the, the upper channel of the Bollinger and the lower channel of the Bollinger. So if you have a look at the DAX as such there, uh, we say 5% of the time the course of the DAX or anything else will be outside the channel. So as you can see, I mean there's very few here, we're outside a little bit, there we're outside a little bit at the top, but usually we're always trading within. As you can see, the 20, which is the center line of the Bollinger, serves also as a support and resistance. It's a dynamic support and resistance because it's not a line, uh, as such a straight line. Uh, it's an average. So uh, as you can see, it's nicely bounced back on it here. There, it wanted to touch it. There, we broke it, but it's kind of bounced back on top of it. So yeah, it nicely follows the course of the DAX. At the bottom here, what we've got are the stochastics, the settings, as you can see, 14, uh, 5, and 3, 14, 3, and 5. Uh, depends how uh, they put it for you, but uh, as such, what it is, well, it's an oscillator. You've got the 20 level, 80 level here. When you've got the 20 level at the bottom, it indicates usually that the market is in an oversold situation. When you're at the top, it indicates the market is an overbought situation. Nevertheless, beware, this is something that we're not really going to consider. And there's a simple explanation to that, because if you just trade by thinking, well, when this oscillator tells me we're overbought, I'm going to sell. When it tells me we're oversold, I'm going to buy. Then you're going to get burned, because as you can see here, all this there, it's telling you, hey, 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 we're oversold. So if at this level you're saying, well, I'm going to buy, well, you're going to get burned. Oh, we go back down, I'm going to buy. You're going to get burned, because it's basically not telling you that. So it's not because it's oversold that people are going to start buying. So this is not really something to look out for. We're going to look at something completely different. I'll just take that out for you, which is basically the divergences. What is a divergence? So usually when it goes up and we form a top on the course, we form a top on the uh, stochastics too. If we form a higher top on the stochastics, then we form a higher top on the uh, sorry, higher top on the course of the DAX. We form a higher top on, uh, top on stochastics. Nevertheless, in the case here that uh, I've drawn for you, there we've got a top there that is formed on stochastics. Nevertheless, we've got a higher top on the DAX, which represents a lower top on stochastics. Now, this is divergence. Basically, it's telling you that. We're pushing up in, in price or in level here for the DAX, but we're not following on the oscillator, which means that uh, there are less uh, bulls uh, in play here, and therefore this is dying down. Now, a, um, and the identification of the divergence is important because this is a, a uh, indication that the trend is dying. So as such, if you remember when we had our trend line here, uh, we'd actually, oh, sorry, I've uh, gone the wrong way. We've actually identified that we had, just let me uh, go back one. We had our trend line there. 
trend line that was broken but nevertheless when we reached this point before we broke this trend line we spotted the divergence so we would have spotted that we would have had an indication there on our stochastic saying uh, well as you can see uh, this is going we're losing momentum we're losing strength and as such uh, we're losing force so this is telling us I, I, eyes up we might be actually breaking this trend line which is exactly what we did so we would have had an indication of a possible breakout before breaking out so I mean this is something that we use all the time uh, it works for tops. I mean, there we're looking at the case of the DAX because we're in upwards movement. But if we look here, for example, you can actually see we did a bottom, which is this bottom there. And then we did this bottom here, which is the bottom that's represented here. And it's higher. So instead of doing a lower bottom, we did a higher bottom. This is a divergence. Is This is telling you we should go the other way. Uh, this is something that's going to indicate the possibility of a trend reversal and it's usually a very strong indicator. Divergence usually gives you high probability of, of reversal but a divergence must be confirmed. Now the question is how do you confirm a divergence? So a divergence is confirmed with Fibonacci. This is what you can see here. Fibonacci is this uh, line that is drawn between the lower bit of the upwards movement and the top of the uh, uh, of the DAX in this case where we've had our lower high as you can see here at this level we've drawn Fibonacci we've got uh, these level which is 23.6 38.2 and 50 so what we're going to be interested in here in the validation of a divergence are the first two levels for a trade this does mean though we're going to go down but for an immediate trade we're going to be looking at these what does this mean so if we've got a divergence and the 23.6 level is hit we don't need to close below it, but just hit by a wick, which happened as you can see here, and it happened here, and it happened here. So it's been hit three times, but it's it does you know work as a support. But as soon as it's hit, this is an indication that we're heading for the 38.2 for sure. So we've got 99% probability that we're going to head for the um, 38.2 level. So here, I would say that we've got a 99% probability of winning a short trade that goes from the 9197 level to the 9039 so 130 points here I would take this trade and I'll, I will be taking this trade uh, I will be waiting to get closer to have a little closure below I mean this is the four hourly chart I'll be going on my 30 or 15 minute charts as soon as we're below 9197 I'll go short I'll have a stop loss or a uh, remember the uh, hedging uh, strategy at these tops here and I'll be taking a short trade with objective 38.2 which is 90.39 we did identify with our head and shoulders that we should be going to 8960 level which is around nicely around the 50 so what you could do is uh, take profits here or actually leave your trade running nevertheless what's going to happen I mean I can guarantee you that this is going to happen this is going to serve as support we're going to bounce back on it and then we'll break it and then we'll continue our way down which if you remember the Elliott wave pattern wave one wave two wave three and so on so I mean I would take my profit here I'd set my TP there's absolutely nothing wrong in taking profit the profits and the profit all the time and I would wait for the bounce back I wouldn't allow the market to take this away from me and then when we re reach this I would re-enter and then exit at the 89.60 so I'd take two trades on this and I would actually uh, be out for this little breather. This is the strategy I would use on the DAX for the coming days. This is the Fibonacci retracement. So as I was saying to you, when level 23.6 is hit, in the case of the classic divergence, which is uh, a bearish one here, uh, the 38.2 is almost always hit, and this level becomes our objective. Now we've got four types of divergences. Now what we've just seen now in the case of the DAX is a regular bearish divergence where we've had a higher high, but the stochastics hasn't followed and we've done a high low. This indicates trend reversal, we're going down. Nevertheless, imagine that we're in a downwards movement, which is the case there. Should uh, the DAX go down and then further down, but on the stochastics, it goes down and we do a higher uh, high here instead of doing a lower one. Well, this is a hidden bearish divergence, which indicates that the uh, uh, the momentum and the force of the downwards trend is still there and is strong. So this is telling us uh, all good, remain in your position, do not close it because we're continuing our way down. So this is a continuation indication of a, of a trend, in this case a downwards trend. And it's exactly the same for an upwards trend. We've got, for example, uh, the case just below our, our lows of the 15th of October on the DAX. 
we went down. Nevertheless, the stochastic didn't follow, we went up. And this indicates a bullish uh, trend reversal. We're going to go up. Once again, if we're going up, as you can see here, but the stochastics goes a bit further down, so we reach, even if we reach the oversold area, even though we've gone higher up, this is indication that the bulls are in control and that everything is good and we're continuing in a bullish uh, trend. So now let's have a quick look on the charts. I'm going a bit quick for you now. I will answer all these questions that are coming in. Please don't worry. And, and if you have questions, you know, don't hesitate to put them in. Uh, I will answer them. But let's study these um, the situation. So, I mean, someone asked USD CAD earlier on. Let's have a look at USD CAD. This is what we've got now. We've got a daily chart here of uh, the USD Canadian. Let's zoom in a little bit. And let's see what's happening now. So, as you can see, now uh, we've got a situation. Um, let's see. Right. So, I mean, this is the, the last high we've done. We've got it here. This high, this previous high is actually below. So, yeah. So, as such, we've got a divergence just here. I mean, we've got a high at this level there. We've got a high at this level there. And as such, uh, if we draw Fibonacci, uh, not Fibonacci, that's the wrong draw. We should have drawn it from here. That's right. Okay, this is our Fibonacci retracement on, on this divergence. So as such, this would have been a, a situation to actually, no, I've drawn this wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, the situation uh, with uh, Fibonacci, how do you know where to draw it? So you've got to draw it at the initial, uh, at the beginning of the uh, upwards movement. So an upwards trend, you do higher highs and higher lows. So if you have a look, we're doing higher highs, higher lows here. Uh, and then eventually here, we actually do a higher high, but that low should be uh, lower than these, and it isn't the case. So we've consolidated a bit here, so we won't be drawing Fibonacci at this level. We'll be using here and not this bottom one there. In order for us to use it right from here, we shouldn't have had this consolidation. We should have just used it there. So this is where we draw uh, Fibonacci because there mustn't be any consolidation. We've got to be in the uh, movement, higher highs, higher lows uh, as such. So this is why we draw it, 23.6. This is an entry level for a trade. So at one point, I would here, I mean, I didn't trade this because I tend not to look at it. But as soon as it's hit, and it was hit here on the second candle, which is the one I'll be looking at, uh, we've got an opportunity to re-enter at 1.1248. 1 uh, so I would have entered short here, 1.1248, 1 and use 1.1162 1 as the um, uh, objective. And what happened? Well, we've reached it. We actually reached it pretty good. Uh, now, as such, there is another rule that I'll tell you about for divergences. So you can actually extend this objective, but this is a little bit more risky as such. Uh, how do you extend? So, I mean, personally, I would have exited here. I would have entered there. I mean, if we have a look at this, we've got 1.1250, 1.1160. So we're looking at 90 pips. That's a pretty good trade. Uh, I would have traded this nicely. I mean, in the space of, what is it? We're on the daily, so in the four days, we've got 90 pips on this. But uh, in the case of a divergence, bearish or bullish, remember we've got the middle uh, 20 moving average on Bollinger. So if we've got a closure, which is the case here, below Bollinger, then usually our next target is the other side of the Bollinger Bands. Normally, this should be touched. You can see here that it tried to. We didn't quite touch it. You've got to be very careful with the Bollinger Bands because it moves with the candle. So as you can see, it expands or it contracts. Here, for example, it was contracting. It expanded a little bit. So as such, we didn't really touch it. But should it hadn't uh, expanded a bit there, we would have done. Uh, so this is what you've got to be careful. So you could have aimed for this. Uh, I mean, it's always a good idea if you aim for the other side of the Bollinger Bands uh, to shut or close your position a bit before because it is a bit riskier. But you've got, as I said there, in the space of just one day, you would have made an extra uh, 40 pips roughly on, on this trade, which is quite good. So this is how to trade divergences. Nevertheless, as you can see, we've hit the other side or almost hit the other side. And then we continued our upwards movements. So, I mean, we've had a divergence, which indicates in this movement that we were losing strength. We're losing momentum. What is the situation now? Where are we going to go? I mean, uh, there on this daily chart, I haven't got much information. What I would want to do is draw trend lines. Remember, I mean, let's zoom out a bit. So uh, I would definitely draw uh, these trend lines. So from there, have this one. I would draw it from a wick here yeah, like that and I would zoom in to H1 
and have a look. So, I mean, obviously, it would appear there that we've broken it. This is because I'm drawing the trend lines really quickly for you. Uh, there we are. On the uh, four hourly one, as you can see there, uh, we're kind of bouncing on it, and we're at the bottom of the Bollinger Bands there. Remember what we've got here? We've actually got a double top, but the previous movement was coming down, so it doesn't mean anything at all. There's nothing to take here as a trend as such. Um, well, I can't actually see a clear trade on the USD CAD for the time being. Uh, it could go either way. Um, ah, 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 um, yeah, no, it could go either way. When you draw divergences, uh, it's important for you to see, I mean, here, for example, we've actually got uh, this high there, which seems, which is higher, and then the high we've got now is lower. Nevertheless, when you draw a divergence, you've got to be able to draw a straight line between the highs without cutting any uh, wicks. Here, for example, we're cutting these wicks, so this isn't a divergence we can use. The divergence, you've got to be able to draw it like this, for example, without cutting any candles as such. Right, 11. So this is opening. We've opened with a little gap. So, I mean, markets are opening now, uh, and as such, uh, we've just got a slight gap down. Remember what I was saying? Usually a gap is closed. I mean, there we're looking at, well, 1 to 12.76 to uh, 12.87, so just 11 pips down. You can actually see, and I'm pretty sure if you do a five-minute look on this, uh, we'll close this gap for sure. We'll close it for sure. So, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, as such, this is the situation with the divergences and how to find them. Don't look for divergences on the 5 minute. 15 minute and 30 minute is okay. This is the situation for the USD CAD as such. Uh, 30 minute, well there, well we've had the, uh, did we have anything? Uh, not really, no. As I said, this, this situation, this specific uh, trade there, I can't see anything pretty good on, on USD CAD. So, uh, but and nevertheless, you've seen the divergences we have. Let's have a look at the, someone was talking to me about FTSE. FTSE is what we got here. Let's have a look at the daily. Uh, right, well, this looks pretty much like the DAX, really, chart. Uh, usually, if the DAX goes down, this should follow a little bit. Um, okay, right. On the FTSE, well, you can actually see we have got a bearish divergence in formation. Uh, we've got a top here that you can clearly see, this top. And then we've got a higher top there, which is lower. I mean, it didn't follow on the stochastics. We've got a lower high here. So, as such, a lower high... Uh, remember what I was saying to you, what we need to do is you've got to look at the beginning of this movement. Uh, here, for example, we've actually done a high high, so I would take it from here. So this is uh, where we are. Oops, I've got to go to the top of the pick. So I mean here I would look out for this. We haven't got a clear trade now, but should uh, we come down and hit the uh, 65.69 level, which is 23.6 Fibonacci, then 65.20 uh, level, uh, is or 65.19 is our objective. This is a trade I would take, definitely. Wait for it to hit it in order to validate this divergence and then you can guarantee 99% that we'll be heading down there. Right, so that would be about it. So these now, I mean, it's already, we've been here for two hours. Wow, I mean, the 60-minute uh, uh, webinar has been uh, double that, two hours. I mean, uh, we've kind of looked at everything I was hoping to look out for tonight. And uh, basically, uh, this is the final questions. Final questions, what we've seen tonight. I mean, uh, I'm going to give you about two minutes uh, to look at this. Uh, if you have any questions, please do put them now. I mean, I'll be answering them. I'll be here for another about 15 minutes or so uh, to answer your questions. For those of you who haven't, and I want to thank you for being with us tonight, I would like to ask you for a little favor, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, if you'd like to take a moment to go on, uh, on eToro, I mean, you don't have to do it now. I mean, it is pretty late, especially if you're in, in Europe. Uh, but uh, if you could go to eToro, go on our wall, eToro, and uh, write down your comments, good or bad. I mean, write your bad comments too, if you've got any bad comments. Uh, if they're good, then please write them too. On what you thought, if you enjoyed it, I mean, it's really, really nice to receive uh, positive and the negative feedback. Uh, enables us to uh, kind of, um, uh, well, better, shall we say. And uh, if, we, if I'm making mistakes, then not make them in, in future webinars. And if I'm doing something well, then I'm, I'm glad to, uh, to know that, uh, you know, it, this will help, shall we say. So, I mean, yeah, please, please do, um, do write all your comments. Write down what you thought, if you enjoyed it as such. I mean, the idea behind this isn't to uh, be solitary. I mean, trading can be uh, solitary. But the bigger the community, the better. Uh, let's try and uh, increase. I mean, all, this community isn't mine. It's ours. Uh, we all benefit from it. 
So, I mean, the, the more we are in here, the more traders we are, then the more uh, experience the more opportunities we'd have where we'll be sharing trades and it's not because someone within the community would share a trade and tell you right we've got a uh, head and shoulders on gold with uh, uh, entry point at such level stop loss or stop alert at this level and take profit at this level I mean check it uh, look for it you know uh, have a have a look at your chart and confirm it and then as such where you can say yeah good I can see this and I'll be taking it and then that's the best way of doing it because you don't feel alone and uh, you can actually see things that other people haven't seen. So uh, uh, as such, uh, that's great. Uh, I will give you about a couple of minutes now to write your questions. Please do that. I'll just go back here. I'm going to leave you my uh, email address there that you can actually see this email. Don't hesitate to email any questions to you. And in the meantime, I'm going to start looking at your questions. So please do uh, write them too. Let's go over oh, quite a few. Okay, then. so um, is there anything to watch out for this week with announcements? Uh, I haven't really checked announcements. I mean, uh, in this case, Lee, I don't, um, I don't specifically trade announcements as such because, I mean, an announcement will give you uh, an immediate trade with possibly 10, 20 pips, uh, possibly gain. Uh, it can go either way. It's difficult in the case of a volatile market. You've got to have a few indications. Uh, I mean, uh, I trend to not really trade announcements. I look for breakouts of trend lines, breakouts of supports, resistances. Well, basically what we've looked at tonight is what I look for on my charts. And usually, if you look at it on the weekly, uh, daily chart, you identify in the bigger picture what it should do. For example, now we've seen that the DAX should go down. I mean, our weekly chart is clear. It's telling us uh, that uh, we should go down. The daily chart, we've got a nice little, sorry, the four-hourly chart, we've got a nice head and shoulders formed. We had a bearish divergence that was validated. We had a breakout of the, the upwards trend line. We kissed it goodbye. I mean, everything is in our favor to say we're going down. We could be wrong, but I can guarantee 99% that uh, we're going down. Uh, that 1% is still there though and it will always be there and you've got to know how to accept it. But should uh, it appear that you know uh, the DAX does go up for a reason or another, let's say that there is an extra stimulus. Uh, for example, I mean last week Draghi did come out on a Thursday and uh, it wasn't last week, it was the week before I believe. Or, yeah. Uh, and uh, what did he say? I mean he just uh, stimulated the uh, economy within the EU and you know, announced that his injections, shall we say, just like the Bank of Japan did, and that caused an increase uh, or jump of the DAX, uh, which broke a few trend lines. I mean in the case of our account, I mean if some of, us, uh, some of you were copying me uh, on that Thursday, they would have noticed that I hedged. I took a hedging strategy on, on that because we broke a trend line, uh, one of our uh, trend lines, shall we say, and as such, it kind of invalidated the possibility of a clear downwards trend. So I hedged. I had a plan B. I didn't just take a loss. And the hedge worked out pretty well because we closed it with profit, and we obviously closed one position with a loss, which was the long we took because, I mean, now is not the time to take a long unless you're hedging. So I mean, uh, yep, yeah, uh, now I would say 99% we're going down with the DAX, as you can see with all these different indications uh, that we've seen. Uh, what is my objective on Euro US dollar? So I mean, Euro US dollar now, I mean, we're in a bit of a consolidation area. We've had a few bullish divergences that I've noticed it bounced back a bit. Uh, the Euro US, I would trade on, let's say, a longer time frame. I wouldn't be interested to going on a five minute or 50 minute chart Euro US. Uh, I, I'm definitely trading short Euro US. I'm not trading long. Uh, I would actually have a stop loss at a high level though. I would expect uh, the possibility of volatile movement could take you even to the 127 area. Uh, but um, actually, I'll tell you what. Let's have a look at it. Euro US. That's the best thing to do. We have a look at the chart. So I mean, as such, I mean, there we're looking at the four hourly chart. Uh, we've kind of consolidated. We've been in the in the clear downwards movement. Let's have a look at the daily chart. So I mean, on the daily chart, let's draw our trend lines. I mean, we've got a nice one here. That's it. There. We've got another one here. And then I'd be tempted to draw this one. All right. So these are the trends that I'm going to be looking at on the Euro US dollar. If we actually go down now, actually that might be a bit too much. 
Okay, so these lines that you can see are the lines that I'm looking for. Now, obviously now, I mean, we've had a bit of a up and down movement. Uh, we've got a slight head and shoulders that you can see here uh, with the neckline, which is, I mean, it's obviously a downwards neckline, but I've set it there to do an average. So as such, I would see a movement to go from there to there. So 13.07, 13.07 up. Uh, yeah, 13.07, if we do uh, obtain this objective for where we are now, we'd be breaking this uh, trend line. So what I would do now, I'd wait. I wouldn't take any position Euro US. Uh, I would wait and see if uh, once we reach this trend line, we break it and go above it. The, the indication for now would be that with this figure there, we should do. Uh, we should go to, to 1307 level, to, I mean, that would take us to uh, 1.2630, so 126.30 if uh, this objective is met. If it isn't, I mean, it, it's not because we've got a figure that the objective will be met all the time. This is uh, a clear situation. So, I mean, we could actually go to it. This is an important trend line. We could break it. Uh, if we go back up to it, then we'll be aiming for, obviously, a trend line goes down and as time goes by, I mean, we could be looking at 127.50, 127 to 127.50 before breaking down. And after that, our trend line is a bit further up, that other one there, which is around the 129 level. So, I mean, I, I do not expect us going back at this uh, this point. Euro is way too weak for this. Even the second one would be difficult. Nevertheless, this figure is telling us what it's telling us. So, I mean, there's a possibility uh, we could actually go and retest uh, these levels there. So, I mean, if we do, we've got uh, support there. We could go back to 126.33. But long-term long trades on the euro, I'm, uh, I'm a bearish. Uh, I can see this going going down, going down quite a bit. Uh, I would expect 117 and even 116 on, on euro long term. Uh, I'm talking months here, not talking hours. All right. So let's have a look at uh, another question. Yeah, thank you very much. Dropped an email. That's excellent. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Excellent. I'm glad you're happy. Interested in one to one? Yeah, no problem. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Try to open a demo account with the MT4 link you suggested, but couldn't. So I tried a different broker, but the demo account didn't include DAX. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Um, basically, I mean, I don't want to uh, force you to take any broker at all. I mean, as I said, if you're using MT4, you can still use uh, eToro as your main broker. You don't have to uh, trade with a different one. I'm not trying to make you change brokers. No, far from that. I'm actually trying to get you to use the social aspect of eToro even more by sharing trades. So, I mean, um, what I would do is, uh, yeah, xm.com. I mean, I'm going to send you uh, a link that you can actually see. This is uh, a broker that I use, XM. Uh, you can actually trade uh, the DAX on it, and you've got all the Forex pairs. Um, and as such, they've got the MT4 platform. You open a demo account with them. You do not have to, uh, to send any information, documentation, or whatever. You just stick to your demo account. There's no time limit on it. You can keep it for the time you want. Uh, they're not going to say you've only got 30 days. Uh, and as such, you download the MT4 software, and you'll be able to have your charts live. If you don't want to use MT4, if you don't know how at this point, I mean, I should be showing you at a later stage, but please bear in mind that you can use the eToro charts. Just add stochastics and Bollinger Bands for the divergences. Very interesting webinar. webinar. Thank you very much. It was a first. Yeah, excellent. I'm happy. Although I didn't understand everything. Yeah, obviously, I mean, I do expect you, uh, I didn't expect you to understand everything. I mean, we did, I called it the basics of trading, but what I did basically is a, a summary of the way we I trade. Uh, so I've explained what I look out for. I've explained the diver now divergences are a very important aspect, and I covered it in the space of 15 minutes. So I mean, 15 minutes divergence, uh, you won't learn much, but you got basically got a big picture, and you can already spot them. So if you put your stochastics on your charts, you'll be able to spot divergences. What I've told you, but uh, we should have a recording. So as such, you'll be able to review this webinar. I'm pretty sure. Thank you for all the info. Really useful, enjoyable. Thank you very much for that feedback. Uh, I must admit, I have more knowledge uh, how it works. Excellent. Oh, I'm happy. I have no negatives. This has been a fantastic webinar. Thank you very much for that. I can't wait for the next. A really big thank you. As I said, I know more about now. First started, I was uh, cringing when you mentioned all the bad habits I had. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why I mentioned them, because I know uh, you're not in you're not in your own, Kim, with uh, bad habits. I mean, we're all, uh, we've all done it. We've all been there. The thing is, you've got to know that they exist. You've got to know what they are. 
and you've got to make sure you don't do them, which is uh, the most important bit. Uh, you don't just extend your stop loss because you see what happens. Uh, you don't say, I close all my trades in green. You can't win them all. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that was uh, that's why I wanted to start with that. Thank you very much for your time and sharing knowledge. Much help starting off. No, no problem. My pleasure. Thanks again. We'll definitely follow you on Eto. Thank you very much, Marin. Apologies, I need to drop off. Yeah, no problem at all. Okay, I would like to be able to get a copy of this meeting from you. Okay, I think I'll put it on YouTube. So I'll be putting on YouTube the um, uh, the information of the link. I actually put maybe the uh, webinar on YouTube as such. Recent reverse head on shoulder on Euro US dollar. Um, uh, recent reverse head and shoulder. Okay, Steve, let's have a quick look. I mean, I've got a bit of time, so we can have a, a look at that. Uh, Steve, could you, uh, if I don't see it, could you put a um, the time frame you're looking at for this? Let's have a look. I'll take these lines off. So, I mean, we haven't got it on the daily. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, reverse head and shoulder. Oh, yeah, that's what we were mentioning, I suppose, uh, earlier on, obviously, with the trend lines. So, yeah, we have got uh, on the four-hourly one, uh, reverse head and shoulder, which is possible. Uh, we'll just have to see if we break those trend lines as such. Yeah, Lee, thank you, superb. Uh, with regards to one to one, yeah, okay, I'll contact you with regards to uh, one to one um, at a later stage. Yeah, Marlon, thank you very much. Copy on eToro. Great experience, George. I'm glad. Very, thank you for the honest help. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. Next, I'll em okay, I'll email the next invite. So what you can do too is uh, send drop me an email too uh, as such. But please do, uh, as I said, if you uh, don't mind contacting me on, on eToro and leave uh, your comments on my wall on eToro. That would be great. Well, I think I've covered it all now. If I haven't really uh, answered the questions, uh, then uh, as such, uh, email them. Uh, but then again, uh, we'll, we'll be doing more of these. I'll try and do them over the weekends. I mean, a little webinar per week is fine. I mean, we did go over the top there. I mean, this year was been a two-hour webinar. It was a first. Uh, I'm glad that you liked it, uh, that, uh, you know, feedback seems pretty much positive. Hope you learned something. I'm pretty sure you have, as I can tell you now. I mean, you know a lot more than most of the traders on eToro. And uh, what you've got to do now is use it. So, I mean, use these techniques uh, on the virtual account. Uh, for now, leave, um, uh, do not do it real as such because uh, you've got to kind of go into more details. But try it, no, first try, you know, try uh, it out at this stage on your virtual account to trade divergences, breakouts of trend lines, and you'll see uh, how pretty good and reliable it is. It seems uh, easy. It seems uh, maybe possibly too easy to do it. Uh, but there are ways uh, of knowing how to exit a trade because obviously trading a breakout is pretty good. You go long on a breakout of a downwards trend, but you don't know where to exit. This is a problem that you would have now. Uh, and obviously there are other things to look out. For example, a bearish divergence in a new upwards trend would tell you, I, I, you've got to you know, take your profits now. So I mean, all this are uh, extra things that we'll be doing. I think it's, it's best to carry out webinars just on divergences. Uh, and so on because that will take uh, quite a bit of time. So that's about it for now. I mean, I'd like to thank you all once again for, for coming. As I said, if you don't mind, drop a line on eToro for me. Let me know what you thought, if you liked it. And uh, thank you very much and good evening to all of you.